Hi again, everyone. I'm James Erpine along with Rob Roberts. Welcome in to Cincinnati Christian University football. The 0-7 Eagles take on the 1-6 Bethel University Wildcats on this gorgeous Saturday afternoon. This is Waycross Television, ccuathletics.com. Great to be with you today. And CCU coming in 0-7 on the year, looking for their first win. Bethel, 1-6, a lot to get into as far as this matchup's concerned. Just a few minutes away from kickoff, we're going to toss it down to our very own Rob Roberts, who is with Eagles head coach David Fulcher. Now with Coach Fulcher and Coach, a tough loss a week ago, but you make the change of quarterback as you go back to Derek Taylor, a guy that got some action early but missed some time due to injury. Talk about how he can attack this Bethel defense. The defense has given up over 540 yards a game and more than 45 points per game. Well, you know, it's execution. Um, and we thought that uh, bringing Derek back uh, after the knee injury a couple of weeks ago, he's going to give us a better chance to do that, put Brayton out there at wide receiver and get Brayton the football in his hand. Um, but just kind of control the offense. And once again, this is a team uh, that we're playing against that are giving up a lot of points and yards. We've got to take advantage of it. Now, you lose Chris Young after a week ago, ran for 149 yards and 25 carries to a concussion. You go back to Garner Harris. Talk about what he needs to do between the tackles. Well, Garner's just going to be Garner. Garner's a smash mouth football player. He's going to work hard all day for us. And we just got to continue to push the football down the field on the ground. And I don't want to throw the football, I have to play from behind. So we're going to try to play smash mouth football with them and see what they can do. Now, the one thing they do have is two good linebackers and Patrick and uh, Ballou. They lead the team in tackles and tackles uh, for loss as well. How do you try to neutralize those linebackers? Well, you got to get a hat on hat. You know, the big run that we had last week with Chris, everybody blocked. And that was one of the few plays that we had in, in, our, in our game plan that everybody blocked man on man. So that's what we got to do today. We got to get a, a blocker on those guys and make them uh, become real good football players and not just give them easy things. Now, on the other side of the football, they have a very good standout running back in Ty Davis, averaging five yards a pop, 468 yards on the season. Talk about the role that Valentino and company need to play along that defensive front. Well, you know, once again, we're, we're looking at an offensive line that's struggling. Um, they got a good running back, but th if they can't run the football and we can stop them at the line of scrimmage, uh, it'll make an easy game for us. But we, we've got to work hard, and we've got to work hard four quarters. Now, they have just a 50% uh, passing game. Um, with uh, Casanova on the other side, but talk to play of, uh, of Daryl McNeil Jr. Really locked down last week against Campbellsville. I was really surprised that second half. They didn't even throw in his way. Talk about his development and what he means to the back end of your defense. Well, I think Daryl is starting to realize the ability that he has, and I think that once all of our players realize the ability that, that they have, they'll make the game easy for them to play, and I think McNeil is, is starting to show that he can play that position. Now, I'm, hopefully I don't jinx him, but I think that he uh, – He's got it now, and I think he's going to play well. All right. What's the one key to pick up the first uh, W under your coaching career? We have to attack their football team, both sides of the ball. We have to attack. All right. Good luck today, right, Coach. Right. And the one thing, James, you can't complain about, the weather. Low 70s, partly sunny. Couldn't ask for a better Saturday afternoon in Cincinnati in the end of October. No doubt about that. That's Rob Roberts, who will be joining me in the booth in just a second as we look at the coin toss here with Garner Harris, number 34 out there, team captain today. Also, number 25, Danielle Denson, the strong safety out there for the coin toss. And, and this is a, a big game on many fronts if you're the Eagles. You get a, a Bethel team that is only averaging 16 points a game, has one win on the year. And if you're an Eagles fan, if you're, you're a member of this Cincinnati Christian Eagles football team, you got to think you have a good shot today. Rob, you, you look at these two teams on paper, and, and the Eagles – Two big, um, two big lineup changes in the starting lineup. And uh, for more on that, talk about it, Rob. As we go <laughs> back to uh, Derek Taylor, I yep. got to, uh, some playing time earlier due, due to the injury to Walmondorf, the coming off the knee injury. If you're going to give him the start today, you're going to take Walmondorf from that quarterback. You're going to put him in that slot, use, of, uh, use his legs. We've seen what he can do as a runner. Now we get to see what he does as a receiver. But I think the big loss is you lose Chris Young this week. Last week played just a half, 25 mm -hmm. carries, 149 yards. Now you're going back to that bruiser, Garner Harris. As, as we talked about off the air before we, we came on, we were kind of hoping to see that one-two punch of Harris with the power and then Young with that speed on that second level. As you watch the Eagles jog out of the locker room. And, and yeah, Rob, I, I think it's interesting because towards the end of, of last week's broadcast, we discussed what would happen if, if they did make a, a quarterback change. So now you get Derek Taylor in there. 
someone who might be able to get the ball down the field a little bit more. And Wommeldorf, we were talking about him. We saw him in warm-ups. I think he's going to give the wide receiving core a boost. So I, I think this could help the Eagles on, on many many fronts. Derek Taylor is still, still young, just a freshman. First year inside the program, as a lot of these guys are, completing just 50% of his passes. But more of that vertical threat. And there's two games that, that he played, not even complete games, over 200 yards passing, two touchdowns, uh, one interception, can run it. Uh, when he needs to, eight carries uh, for 18 yards. But while he has the ability to run, he's looking to throw it first. And that's the one thing, uh, not to knock Wallendorf, but he was a run first, pass second. Taylor's going to give you that, let's pass first, I'm going to run it kind of second and give these receivers downfield a chance to let things develop, especially Mason Chapman at the tight end. Now you get Wallendorf uh, down the field as well. Uh, Killings had a good game last week, as did Larry Jackson. Yeah, so Zach Pickett as well as a guy got the touchdown. I mean, so you, you, you got a, a bunch of guys there that, that you're hoping to get the ball to. And, and one guy I think they, they missed the last week, and, and you mentioned Chris Young out this week, was getting a, a ton of carries out today with a concussion, which is a loss. But you get Garner Harris back. And Garner Harris, when you look at this defense for Bethel, that's giving up a ton of yards. Harris is that kind of guy you want because he's going to get you four or five yards and make defenders pay for trying to hit him. Well, he's going to get you those four to five yards, as you said, and he's going to bruise them, and that's where you're going to miss Young because as he wears them down, then all of a sudden you come back with the speed back Young who has that home run ability. We talked about Garner Harris. He's going to get you those five to 15 yards. It's that 20, 20 to 50, those longer runs that the CCU offense was desperately missing those first handful of weeks as Young was out with injury that he brought to the table last week. And as you look at the score, really not indicative of, the, of the, how that game was played out. That was a field position second quarter that, that uh, made CCU fall behind. The Bethel Wildcats will kick off to start this game. Eagles will receive Dalton McCann, the freshman, back for the kick. Jaden Killings back for the Eagles. And we have, we're underway. This is going to be a really short kick. Picked up at the 23-yard line and returned across the 30. Make that the 33-yard line. So Eagles will get good field position on the first possession of the game here comes Derek Taylor the freshman comes in thrown for a, a pair of touchdowns on the year also has 214 yards passing and you and you mentioned uh, his injuries and stuff but this is a good defense to, to want to go you want to go up against if you're a freshman a chance to have success early well coach Fulcher talked about the beginning establish the run game and then you can go your play action and get Taylor settled in if they're able to get Garner Harris going early, that's going to go a long way to how well Derek Taylor plays. Garner Harris, the lone back right now. He takes the, the ball on the left side, gets brought down after about a yard on that first and 10 play. Well, the one thing that they do have good linebackers, does Bethel with Anthony Patrick and Jeremy Below uh, lead the team in tackles and tackles uh, for loss. Good penetration, downhill guys, guys that Coach Fulcher likes. And it's something he's hoping his linebackers can do, play, uh, be able to crash that line. Last week, Rob, we, we noticed that the Eagles, especially early on, were getting big plays, four, five, six-yard plays on first down. That right there goes for no gain, and that's uh, certainly something if you're the Eagles you, you want to fix up here. Let's see what they do on second down. It's going to be a pitch to Garner Harris. He, he cuts to the left, doesn't find much running room, if any at all. And right Gets brought down by safety Josh Burns, the, the senior for the Wildcats, and, and that's going to bring up Phil Long. 56, yep. we just talked about him, but Coach Fulcher talked about the top. You can't play behind the sticks, and right here you are in the third and 11, a young freshman quarterback with only a handful of, uh, with only 52 pass attempts on the year, still trusting what he sees down the field. Now you're in an obvious passing situation. Defensive ends are able to rush without having to worry about the run. Third and 12, Garner two. Taylor's left. Derek Taylor operating out of the shotgun. Two wide receivers, sends a man in motion. He's going to look to the right side and misses his guy intended for Jaden Killings, and it didn't seem like they were on the right page there, so that's going to bring up fourth and 12, and the Eagles will punt for the first time today. Well, give credit, though, to the Bethel secondary. You're allowed to get a hand on the receiver within those first couple yards, so they got tangled up. Thought he was going to get, get there quicker on that slant, but right there you see that, that trying to get connected on the same page you haven't played in a few weeks you're coming off the knee injury it takes a while to get used to your receivers and your receivers getting used uh, to the quarterback as they're used to Wallendorf and Szymanski uh, delivering them the football Trey Miles on for the punt he had a, a mixed bag last week gets this one away had some pressure up in the air high up in the air will be returned and Bethel gets it across the 50 into CCU territory down to the 40 across the 40 down to the they're going to mark it at the 39-yard line, 
And right there, that was uh, Jacoby Reddick on the return for the Wildcats, and that's going to give them field position. Field position was such a factor last week, Rob, in the Eagles. Say, say what you want about the matchup on paper, but the Eagles hung in there, and then when you start to see turnovers, bad punts, that's when the game kind of got away from them, uh, and they put them, their defense in a, a tough position here to start the game. Well, it's hard when your defense only has 30 yards to defend against every <laughs> time they come on, on the football field. We talked about the short punts, uh, the, the bad field position. Your defense can only hold up for so long. That's kind of what we saw in that 28-point second quarter a week ago. First-year starter Sam Castronova starts under center, flips it to the right side, and the Eagles sniff that out right away. Ty Davis, you, you mentioned him in the pre uh, the pregame. Not much there for him, and the Eagles with a, a big stop there. But Davis ranks 47th in the country with his 468 yards mm -hmm. rushing, gets almost five yards a pop. But you got to make Casanova pass or just 50 percent completion, eight touchdowns, four picks. And we saw this defensive line get pressure last week on Campbellsville. Casanova operating out of the shotgun on second down, going to hand it off up the middle again. The Eagles get hands on him, but he just keeps chugging along and. That, that's something we're going to see a lot of today. We're going to see a lot of hands off, uh, handoffs to Davis. But the gang tackling, that's something that they're going to have to do. So far, two plays against Davis, only five yards, well, four yards. So if you're the Eagles, you'll take it. Alekna, guy we said a lot last week, was in on there along with uh, Williamson before McNeil Jr. finished it off. Castronova sends a man in motion on third and six, operating out of the shotgun. He will throw for the first time today. Looking left, doesn't have anybody. Looking to run, finds his tight end, and it's dropped. That would have been good enough for a first down. Good good uh, pass there by Sam Castronova moving in the pocket. But Braden Simmons dropped it, the 6'6 the six, six freshman. And the Eagles defense holds. And it looks like they're going to leave the offense out there. The Wildcats might might go for it here on third and six. Well, that was or a good, fourth and six. That was a good draw if you get tied in. Uh, Simmons on the linebacker, uh, Shipman, able to use uh, – his athletic ability to get open across the middle just couldn't catch a perfectly thrown ball. All right, so here we go, fourth and six. Castronova operating out of the shotgun, looking to pass, looking left side, has a man, goes deep for his tight end, and that's way too out, far out. And Castronova, first-year starter, this offense for the Wildcats averaging 16 points a game, and the Eagles hold after being put in a, a tough spot after the good return. So now here comes... Taylor, here comes the rest of this Eagles offense for uh, round two. Well, you see a 50% passer. They don't like pressure up the middle of the defensive line. Valentino and company able to get that push up the middle. Just threw a little too far on the sideline. But that's what also what happens when you're able to lock up man-to-man -man on the corners with uh, McNeil Jr. and company. Uh, Denson out there on the coverage on the receiver. But when you're able to lock up, put the safeties in the box, that's exactly what you see there, able to crash the linebackers. Taylor operating out of the shotgun on first and 10. Garner Harris to his left. Three wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. He's looking to the bottom of the screen. Going to go deep on the, on the other side. He's got his man. And that's caught for a huge gain up the right side. And that's number 19, Zach Pickett. And we've seen Pickett make that play before. Last week had a huge touchdown. This week, that, that's huge. And that's why you, you made that quarterback change is because if you're Coach Fulcher, you wanted to see if Taylor could do exactly that, stretch the field out, and he did on first down there. Threw a perfect dime along the right side, but he stood in the pocket, able to deliver that football. That's what Fulcher wanted to see was that vertical passing game. Operating out of the shotgun again is Taylor at the 26-yard line, first and 10. Going to be a handoff to Garner Harris. Find some running room up the right side. Gets it down to, they're going to mark it at the 20-yard line. Make that the 19-yard line. So that's a, a big seven-yard gain there, and it'll bring up second and short as now the Eagles have officially moved into the red zone. But anytime you go vertical like that, you stretch the field, their safeties are going to be able to leave that box. We talked at the last couple uh, games that we've had here on uh, Spectrum and on, on Waycross about their safety staying within eight yards of the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. But now their safeties have to stay out of the box. you got to respect the deep ball. Second and three. Taylor operating out of the shotgun again. He's going to hand it off to Garner Harris up the middle. Finds plenty of running room for a first down and more. And he's going to get all the way down to the nine-yard line. Pick up of 10 on second and three. And it is going to be first and goal Eagles after three plays. Three plays, a bunch of yards. It started with Taylor's long pass to Zach Pickett, two Garner Harris runs, and the Eagles are nine yards away from six points. If you're able to get the run game going, if you're able to get that pass game going, keep that defense on their heels, it's going to open up a lot more for this offense. Taylor operating out of the shotgun. You see Garner Harris to his left. 
Pick it at the top of your screen. Sends a man in motion. Jaden Killings at the bottom of the screen. It's going to be a keeper. And Taylor's going to keep it. Moves up the left side. Has some room. Cuts it back. Gets across the five down to the – make that the four. They might even spot that at the three-yard line. You, you see Taylor there, the athleticism. Not only does he have the arm, he's st certainly able to uh, to run it, and he did so there. Well, you see when Garner Harris is getting five, six yards a pop, defense is respecting that draw play. Taylor takes it out of his belly, takes it around the left side, gets a good six yards. Jaden Killings at the top of the screen. Taylor going to operate under center. Big full back in. Garner Harris behind him. Zach Pickett at the bottom of the screen. Taylor's going to hand it off right up to Garner, and not much room there. That was Bet a good tackle there by uh, Trayvon Brown, this 237-pound senior, able to hop on the back of uh, Garner Harris. But the one thing Taylor does give you here on a big third down, that run-pass option. Harris talking with his quarterback there. You're right, big third down. But but I, I would say if you're the Eagles, that you're, you're going to go for a, go, go for it on fourth if you don't get it here. Pickett at the bottom of the screen who set up this drive with a, a huge reception. Taylor going to operate under center. Jaden Killings at the top of the screen. Garner Harris, the lone back in the backfield. This is going to be play action. Taylor going to roll out, and they, they got it stuffed out, out right away, and he fumbled at the end of that, and it's going to be a, a loss of about two. They're going to mark it at the five-yard line, and now it looks like they are going to bring on the field goal team, and I, I don't blame them. They got down there. It didn't seem like they could get much going. Try to get the points well, when you when you got them, and uh, if you don't lose the two yards on that play, you might go for it. If you get it down to the two or the one below, a guy we uh, below the guy we talked about at the top, able number forty, the young sophomore, able to get in there and, and force that uh, run to the outside for a loss. Trey Miles on for the field goal attempt. Dylan Mahoney with the hold, and that isn't going to go. It doesn't go well at all. As Cincinnati Christian doesn't even get the attempt off. Miles unable to. Um, even get an attempt at it. So even yeah. though the, the long play to pick it, some good runs, but uh, it gets blocked, and that is unfortunate if you're Cincinnati Christian. Demetrius Gilbert. Is that who it was who got Able in there? Able to get Gilbert? on it. Of course, he's seventh in the country with four interceptions. This team overall with 11 interceptions, but a good job there by CCU, though, able to hop on that, that loose ball. So Bethel couldn't advance it anymore. Now you're going to give your defense a chance to pin, keep uh, Bethel uh, pinned in deep. And that's tough. The Eagles certainly wanted to, to, to punch it in there, unable to do that, wanted to at least get a field goal cut. And so first and 10, it's going to be a swing pass, uh, or sweep rather, to Davis. Davis takes it uh, across the 15, make it the 17-yard line. The one thing and we're going to see a lot of him today. I mean, we're already sure. seeing it. You know he's going to get a, a few. It's just keeping those big plays, keep it to four yards or less, and, and make, make the young quarterback beat you. We, we've seen his accuracy issues on a couple of those balls. The one incompletion was not his fault. Tight end just dropped it. But if you're able to get some pressure up the middle and force him into some decisions. Castronova looking to throw. Has his man in another drop there. And, and, and I... It was a little low, but I think that's exactly where Castronova had to put that ball based on the defense. And uh, a second drop now by Bethel. Winston should have had that. Going to bring up third down. Winston, the uh, young sophomore a wide receiver out of Knoxville, checking in at 5'8", a buck 70. That's one that uh, he should catch. you got to help out your young quarterback. So Castronova going to operate out of center again. Another third down here. Third and five. Looking to throw. Has a man and overshot him. Looks like he, he might have been going back to, to number six there. So there you go. Eagles defense holds again. And this, if you're Cincinnati Christian, is exactly what you want because you should probably get some pretty good field position. Jaden Killings might get a, a pretty decent return here, or at least a shot at one. And the one thing is Daryl McNeil Jr. came off his guy. If he wouldn't have tripped over his own feet, he might have had a chance to make a play on that ball. But the defense gets the three and out that they needed. They should, as you said, get great starting uh, field position. Taylor and the offense did move the ball very well, but the one thing they need to start doing is start finishing some of these drives now. Yeah, Taylor completed a long ball on that last drive that did not end up in any points. Jaden Killings on for the return, grabs it here, no fair catch, even though there's pressure by him, and uh, tried to make something out of nothing, couldn't get it, but still really good field position now for the Eagles offense. Derek Taylor trots on for the third drive of the game as you get a look at Jaden Killings. So that's the one thing. Killings gives you that, that threat back there on the return game, both kickoff and punt, but excellent starting field position. 
defense does what they need to do. Now the offense needs to do what they need to do. Not only get the ball inside the 20, but come away with some points as well. You see Braden Wommeldorf. He's operating in the, the slot on this play as Taylor sends a man in motion with Garner Harris in the backfield looking to throw. Throws and threw it behind Zach Pickett. I am kind of interested to see what they use with, with Wallendorf because you could also use them in that trick play package as well, wh whether it be on a, on a reverse pass option or a throwback or whatever it might be in yeah. regards to Braden. Yeah, it's certainly. And, and you see, saw on the replay there, Taylor had him, just threw it a little bit behind Pickett. But I will say it looks like Pickett's kind of establishing himself as the, the go-to in his offense from, from last week and, and this week. He operates now. You see him at the bottom of the screen, second and ten. Taylor operating out of the shotgun. He's going to throw again, looking downfield. Swings it the other way to Jaden Killings. Going to be a pickup of about one yard. Exactly one. Put it at the 50-yard line. Going to bring out third and long. And there was pressure. That's a good, good decision by Taylor under pressure just to get the ball out to Killings and uh, make something out of, of not much with the pressure in his face. That was also a good job by the back end of that Bethel defense picking up the screen pass on the wide receiver screen as they also tried to set up Garner Harris on the other side. But the linebackers did a good job on following Garner out of the backfield and once again playing behind the six, third down nine. See what Taylor can do here. Wommeldorf lines up next to Killings at the bottom of the screen. Taylor sends a man in motion with Harris in the backfield. He's going to throw again, looking downfield. He's going to go deep to Braden Wommeldorf. Wommeldorf trying to get position, and it's going to be intercepted. That's probably as good as a punt, though, so not, not awful if you're – uh, a fan of Cincinnati Christian, but either way, interception. I do like the fact that they took a chance there, and that's Daquan Render, the sophomore, with great position, and you can just see it here on this replay, positioned perfectly on Wommeldorf. Wommeldorf tries to use his size, just unable to get over the top of him, and, that's and Render able to come down with the interception. Actually, that's Gilbert's fifth pick of the year. Uh, what came in, T uh, T7, in regards to four picks on the season, now make that number five. But like you said, same thing as a punt. Throws it uh, 35 yards down the football field, pins him inside the 15-yard line. And we got a swing pass quickly. This one is caught, and it's going to be close to a first down on first and 10. So it's, it's about time one of his, his targets catches the ball for him. Sam Castronova completes, uh, I believe that's his first completion of the day after a, couple, a couple drops. And that's the, the you see that's the second, uh, the second, third time they try to get Winston out on the edge, and this time they're able to hook up with a young sophomore. It's going to be first and 10 on the 24. Castronova sends a man in motion. They fall started. Certainly going to be a false Winston start Winston moved there. early, yep. and they finally got it. It's going to back up Bethel five yards. False start is called against Bethel. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. So now first and 15 on the 19 as we just under seven minutes to go here in the first quarter. Castronova sends a man in motion. Operating out of the shotgun. Castronova looking downfield. Has a man over the middle. Big hit there. And what a play. It was dropping a, a big hit and uh, certainly something. that This Lamar Eagles Florence. defense playing well. Yeah, Lamar Florence coming over from that free safety spot. 6'4", 185, and you see that huge hit gets the ball to come loose. But if Casanova throws that ball a second earlier, that was a great route. Ran by Winston. He had him open. Great move on the middle linebacker to even get free. Second down. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. Doesn't look like much there as the Eagles defense hanging tough, and it's going to bring up third down and long for this Bethel offense that struggled to get much going today. Ty Davis doesn't even have a chance to get going. That front four, we talked about Valentino and company, along with Elekna, still doing their job. Williams had another big guy, number 91. He had a good game last week as well. Castronova can operate out of the shotgun with no one in the backfield. Four wide receivers, two at the top of your screen, two at the bottom of the screen. Just looking downfield, looking right, rolls right. There's a hold. And, he, and he's going to run, and he's going to find more than enough room. And they're going to get a late hit. There was a hold on the edge, Williamson. I mean, in some in some parts of the country, that's a, that's at least a 10 to 20. 
as you're going to see here when he rolls out, right there. Yeah. He's got his hand across the chest. He's pulling on the jersey. Should have been a hold. Should be coming back, but they missed it. And that's going to be a fresh set of downs. There were multiple misses, as you see Daryl McNeil right here. There. Right there. That's too late. Very fortunate they didn't throw that flag. He was about a yard and a half out of bounds when he put his shoulder in him. So that's going to be first down. Castronova now with the pitch to Davis up the left side. Davis trying to find some room, get that edge. Doesn't get there. And uh, going to pick up about two yards on first and ten. And so far, the Eagles on defense came in wanting to stop Ty Davis. They've done a pretty good job. They've done a good, a very good job. Put eight, nine in the box. But once again, when you got a guy like McNeil Jr. on one side that shuts down, you don't need any safety help. You're able to give extra attention in that box. And they've done a good job also winning the one-on-one -on -one battles along that defensive line. Castronova operating under center in a running formation. Going to hand it off up to Davis, up the middle. And he has his biggest run of the day. Breaks a tackle. Gets into CCU territory and gets down to the 34-yard line. Couple missed tackles in the box. You're going to see the good penetration as Alekna just ran right by him there and he got a chance to bring him down. But right there, shoulder tackles, not arm tackles. A guy of his stature and Davis, you can't bring him down with shoulders. You got to wrap. 6'2", 250, Ty Davis, and that's his biggest run of the game. Sets up a first and 10 on the 34-yard line. And they're going to run it again. No, play action this time. Looking downfield, has a man, hits his tight end, and his tight end catches it this time. After a drop earlier, that's Braden Simmons with the big game. And that's what the running game does. It's going to make it easier on Castronova. And they go from a big run to a play action. Well, you see the play action, the linebackers bite. So what does that do? It opens up the tight end in between the linebackers and the safety, which results in that big game. If you're able to establish the run like that, it's going to open up everything else in your arsenal. This is going to be a handoff up the left side. And that's going to go all the way in for a touchdown. Gets the edge and more. And for Bethel, that's number 11, Breland McKinney, the junior running back. And you watch him, he gets the edge and then some, keeps his footing. And that's going to put Bethel up 6 to nothing here with 4.13 to go in this first quarter. How about this? You're for Jackson, his first carry of the year, and he goes 13 yards to the house. That's a good, that's a good average. That's, that's when you just One retire. carry, 13 I mean, yards, and a TD. <laughs> you can't do any better than that. Yeah. You might as well just hang it up. But we talk about Davis, that long run set up the play action, which got him down there. Well, they were able to get Bethel down there uh, before McKinney finished off the run. Dalton McCann on for the extra point for the Wildcats. Snap high, hold good, extra point up and good. And that is going to be 7 nothing now. Bethel takes a 7 nothing lead with 4.13 here to go. Rob Roberts and James Rapine with you on Waycross Television Networks, also ccuathletics.com. If you missed the, the live broadcast, which obviously is going on right now, this will re-air multiple times on Spectrum and Cincinnati Bell Phi Optics throughout this week. Defense had, had a chance to, to, to get off the field. They had a pin deep, whether they mm -hmm. missed that hold, hold or not. You still got to give credit to Castronova. You take a third down and 14. The linebackers leave the box. He sees a lot of green. He's able to pick up 16 yards. Next play, Davis stumbles and rumbles for another 40 yards. The play action, and within four plays, all of a sudden you go from a third and 14 situation to in, into the end zone. Yep, and, and that's the thing. And I will say the one thing. CCU was in that position. And, and uh, on a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that I didn't see a flag on, but they're going to push this ball back out to the 50. Well, this will be interesting then as the kickoff is from the 50. McCann on for the kickoff. Killings back for the return for the Eagles. And this ball is still going to be really short. I don't know if it's going to be returnable. And it's going to bounce out of bounds. Good and that's going to be a flag. And that's going to give Derek Taylor and this Eagles offense good field position on their fourth drive of this game. I was almost thinking they might try maybe an onside kick or some kind of a swib kick. Because even if you don't recover it, you're, they're still at the 35-yard line. And that's where they're going to be right now as it is by yep. that kick out of bounds. I will say it, it has been refreshing. On, on two drives today, we've seen downfield throws. 
with, with Derek Taylor. And, and I think that that is, is just going to help everything. It's going to help Garner Harris. It's going to help the, the offense. And it's going to keep that defense honest for the Wildcats. Because there are games where we haven't seen that, and I just think that's something Taylor off, brings. Bounds, well, Taylor, definitely, the one big thing that he brings is, is a guy that's going to stay in the pocket and throw the football down the field. He did have that interception earlier in the game, but it was almost as good as a punt. It was a third down. You're playing behind the sticks. He throws it 40 yards down the field. But once again, he's getting those safeties out of the box, and you're giving those receivers a chance to run their routes. And we saw the nice throw down to Pickett on the, on the opening drive. And we're going to have a re-kick here. And that Both is, sides. that's interesting. So now McCann's going to get another shot at it after the bad kickoff. CCU has declined the penalty, and Bethel will kick off again. All right, that, that was an interesting turn of events there, Ralph. <laughs> That's something you see every day. Usually no. you just take the field position yeah. out of the 40. All right, so McCann here with the kickoff. This is going to give Killings a, a shot at it. He grabs it at the five, now trying to find running room across the left side, trying to get the He's edge, a has a blocker, cuts it back, has some room across the 30 to the 35. So after all of that, <laughs> a great Jayden return Jayden by Jaden Killings, good blocking, and they get it at the 35. So. Really All's well ends well. One, <laughs> one tackle away from taking that thing to the house because it didn't start off too well. He had to stop his momentum from going out of bounds at the five, but able to set up his blocks and use that speed to get the corner. Let's check out this return one more time. Killings, and that's an awkward spot when you're buried in that corner, but he's able to get read his blocks there. Really good block by number four, Larry Jackson. All right, on this first down play, handoff to Garner Harris. Harris gets taken down right after the handoff. The ball carrier, no gain on the play. It's going to bring up second and long, and that's something the Eagles have dealt with a lot today is, is second and long. and that's what They've converted some of them, absolutely, but uh, it, it certainly puts – Derek Taylor, the freshman quarterback, in a tough spot who's operating out of the shotgun on this play. And Coach Fulcher talked about staying out of those behind-the-stick situations, the second and the third and longs. Taylor sends Jackson in motion, looking to pass, not finding anything, and he's going to go down, get sacked. And that's number 91 who came in, didn't give him a chance Bailey. there. And uh, Marcus Bailey, the senior. And you see here he's surveilling the field, option not open, not open. Good, should I run? And Bailey just comes in and gobbles up Taylor. And, and that all comes back to the first down play. It, you might not necessarily throw if you get a couple of yards on, on exactly. first down. They didn't, and they were in throwing down. So now it's third and 16 for this Eagles offense. Garner Harris going to be the, the running back to Taylor's right. Three wide receivers at the top of the screen, one to the bottom of your screen. Taylor looking to throw again. Has his man pick it on a slant with room to run, and that's going to be close to a first down. Ball came out, and it's recovered. And I, mean, I don't know. To me, down. it looked like he was down from here, but obviously we're a ways away up here in the booth. And I think they're going to have a little discussion about this because it looked like when his back hit the ground, the ball came out, and we're going to get a good Taylor angle here. Taylor finds Pickett, who's open. He's really close to a first down. We're going to get a really good look. Oh, glitch. and it glitches there. It was close. They're going to keep the possession the way it is. It was a bang, bang play. L let's take another look at it here. Defense. Quick change. So now the de up. defense in a tough spot again. 37-yard line is where this drive will start. Castronova with a play action. Under pressure, but able to complete it to his tight end, who he's gone to multiple times today. And that's another that's really reception now for Braden Simmons. Braden Simmons. Simmons came into this game with just six catches for 41 yards. He already has two this afternoon, both on the play action. This time they faked that pitch, able to run him out. When they faked that pitch, the linebackers came crashing. Nobody accounted for the big tight end. And now it's first and 10 on the 15-yard line. The Wildcats threatening to, to go up by two scores. It's going to be a pitch up the right side. Davis finds room, and he's going to go all the way into the end zone. 
touchdown, Ty Davis, the junior running back. His last two runs have gone for big plays, and that's a, a really big play, putting up uh, the Wildcats on the board again. 13-0 now. Bethel takes the lead following the turnover. And that's his first ru uh, third rushing touchdown of the year, but you see his big play ability this time, 15 yards out. And the extra point is up, extra point is good. And that is going to be 14 nothing now. Yeah, Bethel with 204 to go in the first quarter. But we talk about field position and, t and turnovers. He put that defense in a quick change. They're already coming off the field, and right there, the, the seas parted. Good blocking up front. And anytime you give Davis a, a hole like that, he's going to take it to the house. And it all started with a, a completion. Derek Taylor hit Zach Pickett on third and 16, and it was really close to a first down. Pickett fumbled. We're, we're going to see if we can get another look at it here because th th they ruled it as a fumble. But, it was bang, but, bang. It was but, close. But, but from here, and it's hard it to tell because we're a mile away. Not a mile, <laughs> but, you know, we're up here in the booth. Hard to tell, but it looked like he was down. So definitely a, a break for the Wildcats as they, they now take a 14 nothing lead with just a couple minutes to go in this first quarter. Tough start, but the way that Taylor and the offense, they've had, they've been moving the ball down the field, but as we talked about at the top, and Coach Fulcher uh, also talked about in, in the pregame about finishing, mm -hmm. finishing drives and starting to cap off and, and doing your job, and this is where we're going to see how this offense responds after the turnover. And another short kickoff, this one going to, be returned to about the 27 yard line or so, 28 yard line. And uh, Jaden Killings doesn't get an opportunity there, but uh, it's interesting. That it looks like it's uh, Montel McKenzie. Is that who that was? 27 McKenzie with the, First down the return there. Well, you can tell they were trying to keep it away from Killings. Killings came one leg tackle away from taking it to the house in the previous kickoff, but. You've seen what Taylor and his offense can do, and I know I've said it a lot, but let's start finishing some of these drives. Yeah, they need to get points here. They start with a handoff to Garner Harris. Harris finds some room, gets across the 30, Great up to move. the 32-yard line. But right there, four yards on first down, your second Garner down Harris. six. Play Getting action ball, stays four, open, eight, Garner four. Harris stays open, and that quick slant to pick it, all still open for your offense. Kind of surprising that they haven't used Mason Chapman as much that tight end, especially when you have a young quarterback like there. You, you see him use that tight end more as that, that safety about Chapman a couple weeks ago had that 10 catch game with that uh, with the touchdown reception. Garner Harris going to operate next to Taylor in the shotgun. Zach Pickett at the bottom of your screen. He's going to throw it looking for Pickett. Pickett was covered. Quick shovel pass, and that's going to go for a first down, and that's a good run there by Larry Jackson. But Heads up play by the freshman quarterback, Derek Taylor, and you see but here, gets under pressure, able to get rid of it. And then look at this right here. If they don't do the shovel pass, Garner Harris wide open at the bottom as well. Really two options there. Jackson using his speed just to blow by a couple Wildcats defenders. And that's a, that's a big play there. You could, not, yeah, you could not give the ball back uh, right away there. You couldn't go three and out. And expect your defense to, to stop uh, the, the running game of Bethel. That's gotten in sync here. So Taylor operating out of the shotgun. It's going to be the read option. Flips it to Garner Harris. Harris Ball's fumbles out. it. No, they're going to say he was down. And they're going to say he was down. There's, a, there's an injured Bethel player down. That's Trayvon Brown, the senior linebacker, down That'd for be Bethel. That'd a big loss. He's had a good game and so he, far today, he's too. He's holding his right knee. And let's get a look at this again. As you see, Garner Harris catches the pitch. Yeah, he's down. That ground caused. As now the, the medical staff for Bethel tends to Trayvon Brown. The 6'1", 237-pound uh, senior. He's had a, a good game so far. Has, has Brown. Brown, a guy this, this season, played in all seven games. He's got 34 tackles. Uh, five tackles uh, for loss to go along with two sacks for the defensive end. Still down, being tended to by medical staff. It looks He's like it's getting up now. Hopefully, it's 
Just a leg Just there. a stinger or something you don't want to see. Looks like it's his right leg. Able to walk off under his own power, though, so that is a good sign. Looks like he's starting to walk a lot better on it the more he stays on it. Yeah. But as you know, anytime you get, you get a bump and a bruise like that. Maybe you know, a helmet hit his knee. You ever bump knees, it's the, the worst pain ever for a little bit, and then exactly. it goes away. So and hopefully it's nothing serious. It's one of those you want to keep moving. You don't want to let, let it sit there and get stiff. But 29 seconds to go. you got a second down and, and, and eight to go. Another opportunity here for this offense is that Eilers is in a quarterback. Yeah, so a quarterback change here. 30 seconds to go. In the first quarter, Cincinnati Christian trails 14-0. Nick Eilers in at quarterback for the Eagles. Garner Harris going to be the, the lone running back. Two of six, 45 yards and a touchdown last week in his debut. Eilers hands it off to Garner Harris for a gain of about one yard on second down, and that'll probably be the final play. Colin O'Brien. the first quarter. Checking in, 6'4", 320 pounds. Garner just Harris swallowed up Garner Harris. On the final play, but interesting to see how they use Eilers here as we move forward, as, as we wait to hear what happened to Derek Taylor as they're getting a look, and it looks like he's going through protocol right now yeah, as they're doing the hands and, and checking his eye CCU movement. Zero. Something that, as, uh, as you know, you cover the NFL a lot, but through all levels in regards to concussion and protocols, a lot more precaution mm -hmm. these days, and you see that's exactly what he's going through. He has to get cleared by the medical staff before he can come back out on the field, and Reason we're out without uh, Chris Young today. We missed Jordan Meekins there for a couple weeks as well under concussion protocol. So that's going to do it for the first quarter. 14 nothing. Bethel has the lead over CCU. Derek Taylor undergoing, uh, being looked at by medical staff. Looked like a staff. He doesn't have his helmet right now. Talking to the trainer on the, the bench with Braden Wombledorf over there, who's a receiver today, over there next to him. But and, I mean, and that it'll be interesting. I will say this: Nick Eilers last week connected with Zach Pickett on a 31-yard touchdown. So he, what we've seen from Taylor so far, he's able to throw it downfield. We saw that from Eilers last week as well. And that's what you need. Uh, Wamandor's been practicing at, at the receiver position all week. He's still your emergency number three. But you got to go ahead and give Eilers a shot here. And Eilers is going to get his shot. Third and nine, in the first play of this second quarter, the 41-yard line. They get the ball between the 49 and the 50-yard line. They will have the first down. Eilers looking downfield, going to throw it downfield for Pickett, and that's a really good defensive play. He threw it up to their go-to receiver. Gilbert. Really good defensive play by number 21, Demetrius Gilbert, who had the interception earlier. And he's, in a guy, he's a freshman. I was he's playing say, really well. He's just a freshman. He doesn't look got, like a freshman. He's got five picks in eight games, tied for the, the lead now in the country. As you see there, Coach is talking to Pickett to maybe try to high point the ball. I will say this, Pickett has uh, made multiple plays over the past couple weeks, certainly carving out a, a niche in this offense. That was going to be a tough play, especially the way Gilbert plays uh, defensive back. Just give credit there to the DB. Trey Miles on for the punt, gets hit as he, as he punts it, but they're not going to call anything, no flag down. That was a smart play there by Reddick, letting that ball hit and go out of bounds as he had a CCU defender right in front of him. And we see it again. It, and you saw him flip there. Crowd wants a, a roughing the kicker call or running into the kicker call. Nothing called. So this is going to give the Wildcats, who have scored on back-to-back -back possessions, the ball at their own 27, make that the 28-yard line with a 14-0 lead, 14.45 to go here in the second quarter. Sam Castronova takes the snap, looking downfield, throws it, throws it high. And is that a one-handed catch? Wow. And they're they're going to call catch that a catch. Line. That was a heck of a catch, but did he get that foot down? One-handed grab. It looked like Luke Mitchum, the sophomore wide receiver from San Antonio, with a huge play. It's Castronova. You see the throw, and look at the catch. That is a catch. Wow, what a catch. First down, they're going to hand it off to Davis up the middle and a, a, a good stop there, and that's something Cincinnati Christian needed so desperately is to, to hit Davis, get him down to the Game ground because he's had some success uh, today running the football. And uh, 
That's 58, Terrence Shipman, who's had been in on a few tackles uh, of Davis today, and that's what the Eagles' defense needs to get Locally back Locally out of Lakota West. Play action to Davis. Castronova looking downfield. Has a got man, him. and he's got his man who he's hit multiple plays today, and that's Braden Simmons. The 6'6 freshman has four receptions on the day, Castronova's multiple receptions on play Braden action Simmons. to Davis. When you see Castronova, he, he knew exactly where he was going with the ball the moment the play was snapped and uh, Make sure you wide open. He played in uh, five games previous, just six catches for four out. games previous, six catches for 41 yards. Wonder Therefore what happened in those out. games because he's looking like a legitimate weapon here right now. Cincinnati Christian takes a timeout with 13.48 to go here in the second quarter. And, and, and this is the danger zone now, Rob. You've officially entered it if, if you're – Cincinnati Christian, you cannot get down by three scores here. Your offense has shown it can move the ball, even though there aren't points on the board. Your, your starting quarterback was under protocol. We're not sure if he's going to return. Even though the defense is in a tough spot, has been in a tough spot a, a couple times today, um, it looks like you, 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 or you, you have to get a stop. I mean, there, there's no doubt about and it I, here. I think that's why Coach Fulcher used that, that time out there, kind of slow the momentum down, get everybody uh, back on, on the same page because you have to hold them here to at least a field goal attempt and give that offensive chance. We talked about moving the balls in between, his 20, in between the 20s, but it's about finishing, finishing and doing your job, as Coach Fulcher said at the top. They've had chances. Derek Taylor on the sidelines, no helmet near him. Just an update on his status. Nick Eilers just went over to the offensive line to try to amp them up a bit, has his helmet on. And you have, you so had, it looks like we might be seeing Nick Eilers the next time the Eagles get the you ball. You had a bunch of people going over to Taylor and, and kind of giving him a hug, sort of yeah. like, you know, hey, sorry, we know how hard you've been working to get back from that leg injury. First and 10, handoff to Davis, stretch old. run, it's flag thrown, and it's another flag twice. thrown. <laughs> Close to a, a touchdown, and they're going to say it's a touchdown. Multiple flags on the field now. They'll decline the far yeah, hold back at the 12, the and they'll take the hold back at the 22. Davis is a heck of a player. If you if you hold as well, he's going to be a superhuman. <laughs> <laughs> able to get the, the edge and able to slow down Williamson along the far side, and it's going to come back. As we, as we wait for the officials calling <laughs> Let's put it there. That's where it goes. As the official moves the flag because it was in the wrong spot. That'll be a first down and 20 after they mark this off. That's the second one, and they'll take the first hold as they also had to hold back at the 12 yard line. So it'll be first down 20, ball back at the 30 Multiple yard line. I'm going to call you Tony up. Romo for predicting what happened. <laughs> Holding is the call, yeah. though, against Bethel. Surprised he's not suiting up for Green Bay this week. Let's check it. Th this play that was a touchdown, but you could see multiple holds right there. right there, and that's the one that was accepted. And then there was one around the edge that wasn't. So it's going to be first and twenty on the thirty-yard line. Play action. Good rush. And th that's what happened. The, the rush there got to Castronova, and good pressure put on by multiple defenders. Noah Carlson finished him off. The linebacker number twenty out of Tippecanoe. That's the best named high school in, Cinc or in Cincinnati, in, uh, in Ohio, by the way. Tippecanoe. Tippecanoe. It's the best one, just so you know. <laughs> Second, it's one on the 30-yard line. 13-31 here to go in the second quarter. And that, that's the break you need. That hold, that's the break you need if you're the defense. Now you have to hang tight here and force either a long field goal attempt or just get the ball back to your offense. Castronova looking downfield, going to go over the middle and got it hits his guy wow. huge hit nice hit by there lamar by the florence forms. and able to hang on is number six there zach winston and you see it again why are they moving the change it's third down it's third and three It should be third and three. That marker should go to the 10 yard line. It was on the 20, there you go. Good thing they got you. Keep them straight. You know, third. <laughs> you do that Friday night, you get used to some of this. Third and three on the 14 <laughs> yard line now for the 17 yard gain. 
to Winston. Castronova gonna operate out of the shotgun. Castronova, and this is a keeper to the right side, they had a trying to the get edge. the edge. Fourth down. Dives for it, doesn't get it. It's gonna bring up fourth and short, and now you're certainly in field goal range. Dalton McCann, five of six on the year, but his longest is only 30 yards. It's 83%, this is gonna be about a 30 yarder, 30, 31 yarder. They're going Wildcat. And they're gonna go for it on fourth down. How about this, Davis at quarterback. Ty Davis, their star player in at quarterback. He's a running back, no doubt about this. He's probably running the ball and he's gonna run it right up the middle, a hesitation. And one-on-one -on -one with the corner, there's no doubt that if you get Davis one-on-one -on -one with the corner, he's gonna win. And he, he got past McNeil there around the edge for the first down. Not a tackle, he misses too often. McNeil, while well, physical corner, usually is a very good tackler in open space, but this time, able to avoid the tackle was Davis. Yeah, but if, if you're Bethel there, you take that matchup. Exactly. You know, Davis is, is just a, a freak. I mean, he's 6'2", 250 with good speed. So gets by McNeil, sets up first Wild and goal again. now on the five. Davis staying in, going to do the same thing, looking for the edge, and then cuts it back. CCU Lawrence. drops him right at the five. Nice pursuit and there it's, uh, by the second and goal now on the five. Davis checking out. But the one thing that Wildcat does, it gets him the ball a lot sooner. He's able to get that read a lot quicker than if the quarterback were to hand him the ball as he checks out. It's Castronova now. Second and goal on the five. Castronova handoff up the left side. And it looks like it's going to be close to a touchdown, but not quite. McKinney. <laughs> and we've seen and McKinney. He was almost two for two in oh, carries my. and touchdowns. Second carry of the Three. season. This first one carrier. went for a 13-yard touchdown four. earlier today. He crossed. No. That's, no. The, that's the soccer line. Yeah. About a half a yard short. It's going to be big third down coming up. McKinney stays in. It's going to be a quarterback they move. That's a false start. They weren't set, oh, and it's coming man. back. It's going to be third and goal from the six. That whole left side wasn't even set yet. And this is going to push them back five yards. Start so now that's going to change their philosophy as they bring in a couple tight ends. Bethel trying to get their third score of this game. Cincinnati Christian defense hanging tight, and now... Bethel going to back up to the six-yard line. Kind of surprised they didn't bring Davis back in, give him that option from the six. McKinney going to stay in. And they're going to play action pass it. Castronova has his tight end, and who else? He's gone to him multiple times today. Braden Simmons with the Castronova's touchdown. And that's about five receptions for Simmons, Simmons the, the freshman score. having a great game. And, and you could tell, play action. Anytime they go play action, it looks like it's going to Simmons, Rob. Well, he's having a big day. His first touchdown catch of the year. And for Castronova, his ninth touchdown pass. The tight end came in this game with just six catches, and he's about to double his output in the first half. Extra point, Extra point up and good from Dalton McCann. And that's going to put Bethel up 21 to nothing here with 11-13 to go in the first half. The started uh, Bethel wanted on the road. We talk about must score situations and you hate to say that with 11 13 to go in a half but you find yourself down 21 nothing you got to get some points on the board before this one gets out of hand and we take another look at the touchdown Clean here. pocket and castronova with just a dart right to Braden simmons who man he it's just it's the matchup that uh get you, that you probably don't prepare for you mentioned it his first touchdown of the season it's not like he was there it's a secret weapon. He wasn't a known one. Well, you get that tight end on the linebacker, and he's able to use that. The speed gets in the back of the end zone. They had to rotate the safety over to the slot. A nice, easy pitch to catch, especially when you have a, a clean pocket, and Castronova had that. Eleven thirteen to go. Nick Eilers going to be in at quarterback on this drive for Cincinnati Christian. Starting quarterback Derek Taylor out right now. No helmet near him. 
in this return. Going to be He's Larry Jackson going to take it up the middle. Has plenty of room across the 40 to the 45. That's how you finish a run. Larry Jackson, who wasn't even back for the return, Larry Jackson gets on the return. plenty of a return the there for the Eagles. And that's going to set up, and, and you take a look at it again, it's just really well blocked. Really well blocked. Untouched He's until, until he gets tackled. Didn't have to, to break a tackle or anything like that. So... First and 10 for Nick Eilers, Garner Harris, and the rest of this Cincinnati Christian offense on the 47-yard line. Special teams done a very good job. Killings also had a big return earlier after the after the uh, the penalty and the short kickoff by Bethel. But Eilers and company, they got to start capping off these drives. Eilers going to operate out of the shotgun on first and 10 from the 47. Looking to pass it. Looking downfield. Gets pressured and gets brought down for a... A sack, that's going to be a loss of 10 yards on first down. Eric Hicks, a guy that came in. Eric Hicks, former UC star, Eric? <laughs> on the hardwood, but this guy, 43rd <laughs> in the country, coming into this game with four sacks, give him his fifth of the year for the big the big hog molly, 6'2", uh, sophomore, checking in at 325. And we have an injury on the field. That's Jason Slack, the right guard. Training staff looking at him now. Looks like it's his left leg. Another one that's lost along the front line. You you, you hate to see, especially for the for the O line that, that you get used to playing with each other. Now you have to switch move, moving people around. You got people moving from the left side to the right side, uh, depending who you bring off the bench, and really changes things up front for CCU. Looks like they're looking at that ankle area. He got up initially, and I, I don't know if something was just bothering him. Maybe it was a cramp or something, but uh, able to jog off. I, I wouldn't be shocked to, uh, to see him back out there after just one, taking one play off after being down. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Hey, if we get that, like you said, he, he's starting to walk on. He's got it already has a brace on that left leg. Has the uh, training staff starting to start stretching him out. Now he's back to walking back to normal on it. So hopefully just a stinger as they take him to the training table. Just walking back to the training table. Second and 18. Clock rolling. Nick Eiler's going to operate out of the shotgun. Sends Larry Jackson in motion, who had the big return to set up this drive. Hand off to Gardner Harris up the left side. Harris trying to get the edge, won't get it. And he gets brought down after a pickup of one. Really good play there by Bethel University. Looks like that was Jeremy Baleu who was able to do that number 40. Guy we talked about with Fulcher at the top. Those linebackers that come down, they lead the team in tackles and tackles uh, for loss. Really a two-headed monster uh, back there with Anthony Patrick. Under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. Big third down now, third and long. Tough spot for Nick Eilers to be in, third and 18. Nick takes the shotgun snap, looking, has Zach Pickett, who drops it. And Pickett, who, who had the fumble earlier, you, you wonder if he's Big just uh, in his head a little Zach bit Pickett. now with that drop. He's pretty sure handed. He is, but it was also a little bit behind him, but one that he'll tell you man to man that he should have caught. While it wouldn't have been enough for a first down, that would have taken the ball to around a midfield and, and given Trey Miles a chance to pin him deep. And that's tough. And you mentioned it at the top, Rob. When you have quarterbacks, you have – yeah, Taylor at one point, Braden Wombledorf at one point, Nick Eilers at one point. It's tough to get into a rhythm with these wide yeah, receivers, chemistry. get on the same page. As you see here, Miles able to get the punt away. It seems like every time it looks like he's not going to. does get that one away. And there's a block in the back. Yeah, it's got to be a – They're not going to call there's it. there's a flag there's finally the flag. because there's a touchdown. And that's Jacoby Reddick, the freshman, takes and it all the way to the that's what Fulcher's looking for. 42 got smoked in the back. Flag finally Jacoby came in. The punt for the score, but there is a Taylor uh, Luckett out of Clinton Massey. Check on the flag here, and there you go. Block in the back, gonna bring it back. And let's take a look at this. Block in the back is called against Bethel. As you see the return. You go get the block in the back right, right there. there. You see the tail end of it. Really, I'm not even sure he even needed that block. Has he already had yeah, the edge? It would have been tough. It would have been a tough tackle, tough play there. 
uh, for Cincinnati Christian to make. And, and you see that so much, and not just in college athletics, but in the pros. The, you see a block in the back that was so unnecessary, and it cost so a big far play. away that the guy didn't even need it. And special teams is you see it each week. It's the most penalized play that that we have when regards to kickoffs and, and punts. And right there, you take six points off the board if you're Bethel. Now you got to start on your own side of the field. Sam Castronova will begin this drive from his own 47-yard line. Going to look to throw, looking at the right side. Gets pressured, Alexa. squeaks away from it, and gets a gain of one. That's really good pressure there by multiple Eagles, including Andrew Alekna, who's Andrew the one who Alekna brought him down. Alekna had a big game last week, the 6'2", 270-pounder, but very fortunate for Castronova, able to roll out of the first missed sack, able to pick up a yard when really probably shouldn't have had anything. So now second and nine, it's gonna be a handoff up the middle. And this is going to be against Bethel. As we're going to get to see Justin Wheeler, the freshman out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Get some snaps. He has six carries for 17 yards coming into this game. Rob referring to 23 is in the backfield right now. We've seen Ty Davis in there for the majority of the game. And this going to be a play action pass over the middle got and again. got his man in that the play action pass to the tight end is working for Bethel. And Cash that Davis one to number 82, Luke Mitchell. Luke Mitchell, who we haven't called his name today yet, I don't believe, but uh, that's a big game there his, uh, for Mitchell. His seventh catch of the season came in this game, six catches for 85 yards. Got half of that on one play. And actually, I lied. He had the one-handed catch earlier. Oh. He had that one-handed catch on the sidelines earlier, so his second catch of the day. And looking at the end zone, got his man out of, out of bounds. And about laid and himself th out. That would have been a touchdown. Winston unable to keep his feet in. And, uh, wow, that, that was a would have been a very quick way to uh, put up six points. But Castronova for a 50% passer, he's got some zip on that football, and he looks a lot better than a 50% passer. But we also saw in his first two drives when he had three to four drops as well that went against him. Second and 10 on the 15. Castronova operating out of the shotgun. Looking to throw again. Left side, going to throw it. Has his man inside the 10. Make that the nine-yard line. It's number 12, Marvin Rudd, his tight end. Castronova's pass is complete. His 10th catch Marvin Rudd. of the season came into this one, nine for a Three buck 72. Six. Three touchdowns on the season as well. Castronova going to operate out of the shotgun again on this third and four. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. And it's going to be really close to a first down. Don't know if he got enough. As they stay with Wheeler. And when you have a three touchdown lead, you can kind of give Davis and let him. Uh, let him uh, this is a really good angle. It looks like he's short, short to me. Yeah. So it's going to be fourth and one. Wheeler staying back there on fourth and one on the nine. Well, on the five, uh, six rather. Five is where they need to go. He didn't get it. Quarterback, he didn't get it. Meeks didn't and company back there. What a they play held. by Cincinnati Christian's defense. They hold him. We've seen them hang tough, downs. man. They have hung tough. Valentino of got there. Year. It was all Valentino, 75. Able to wrap him up in the middle. And that was a huge stop defensively to be able to keep them off the, off the scoreboard and keep this a three-score game. Plenty of time to go. You got 7 4 You got a couple timeouts. Eilers had a few uh, possessions under his belt. They need to start moving the football. They got to give, even if they don't score, pick up a couple first downs and flip this field position. Huge stop. You know, got another quarterback in. We'll Darian get you. Pryor. Yeah, we'll get you some. As Pryor, three of six on the season, just his second game of action. Five yards, no touchdowns, no picks. There's a flag down there. 
delay a game. Delay a delay game. But once again, you're, you're bringing a quarterback just his second game of the year uh, is prior. Half the distance half the to distance. the goal. I'm kind of surprised the you go to a fresh down. quarterback pinned inside your own five-yard line, but Coach Fulcher looking for that spark to get this offense going. Pryor came from Arkansas Baptist Community College. He's from Memphis, Tennessee. Six foot tall and backed up now all the way on the three yard line. First and 15 for Pryor. Garner Harris in the backfield. Has dropped Nick. it. He dropped it. And it's going to be a safety. Gonna be a, nope, yep. they're going to say he got the one yard line. But that center quarterback exchanger coming in off the bench, no chance to really warm up with, with the center. <clears throat> and you take a look at it. Yeah, he drops it here, gets pushed back, and yeah. And so now Eilers is back in. The forward progress. And now you bring Nick Eilers in. And Pryor's in there as well. Let's pick it. Oh, Pryor right. staying in. All right, so here we go. Pryor can operate out of the shotgun now. Three wide receivers, two at the bottom of your screen, one at the top. It's going to be a handoff to Garner Harris, and I don't he's think he's going to get it. And that's going to be a safety. That's going to make it 23 nothing. And Cincinnati Christian now with Derek Taylor starting quarterback out. It appears for the day. Bethel's tackle takes place in the end You zone. see this, and just nowhere to go. Nowhere to go if you're Garner Harris. Bad turn of uh, events. You try to make the change of quarterback, give yourself a little spark. You, you get the delay of game on first down. You, you pin yourself back to the, the three yard line. Then you get the fumble uh, snap there on first down and Garner Harris really just didn't have a chance. Six twenty to go here in the second quarter. Bethel takes a twenty-three nothing lead. Rob Roberts and James Rapine with you at CCUAthletics.com, Waycross Television. And Rob, this is uh, especially the way it, the way it started. <laughs> Derek Taylor on the second drive throws a deep ball to Zach Pickett. The Eagles uh, get a stop on defense and, and, and are in the five within the five yards of scoring a touchdown, getting the lead. Things have just went downhill from there, unable to get a score on that possession. And, and since then, it's been defensive miscues at, at times. But the um, defense, the one thing they need to do is get a body on, on Braden Simmons at the tight end. Already five catches in this opening half. A, a guy really that was off of our radar, but like you said, they paid chances to score, but you stalled inside the five yard line. And it's just been a, a snowball effect. That's led to this 23-0 game as Trey Miles on for the kickoff after the safety. And he kicks it. It's going to bounce, and it's going to be returned. And it's going to be returned all the way to the 35, make that the 33-yard line as the Bethel sideline gets hyped because that's number 53 on the return, J.J. Walker, the freshman linebacker. I don't think he expected to make a return today. <laughs> But he did there. And he rumbled and stumbled his way. And momentum is a huge thing at the college level. And right now, Bethel is living off that momentum. And we said at the last drive when CCU got to stop, but this is another big defensive stand coming up for the defense. Can't afford to fall behind uh, anymore. Already down three scores. And you mentioned Daryl McNeil a lot last week. They're not really trying him this week, it doesn't appear. <laughs> that's a, and that's they're a smart decision. Speaking of, they go deep. That's not to McNeil's side. Daquan Render was out there in coverage. And Render, a guy that got the start last week as he rotated it over from his safety position to start playing corner. Daquan Render on the coverage for the Eagles. But that was a good deep shot. You get those safeties out of the box. Smart play call there by Bethel. Yep, second down, handoff up the middle. This is Davis. Breaks it out right side, and he trips, and that's going to give CCU a break. Gets it down to the 32-yard line. Had more running room there. Lost his foot. Turf monster got him, but third down, eight to go. It looks like go. he's limping a little bit. Well, he came off earlier on yeah. that goal line play, and once we saw the 21 year, year at 23, you thought that they might give him a little bit more uh, of a break and get some of these youngsters, but... 
chance to get off the field if you're CCU. Third down, Castronova has his man. It won't be enough for a first down though. Really big tackle. We've called his name a lot. That's number 10 again. Uh, Lamar Florence. Lamar Florence rather. He's had some big hits today, Florence has. Yeah, he has. He's been all over the field. He's this time he's able to wrap up the fullback coming out in the flat. The young sophomore, Josh Williams, checking in at, at, at 205. And for Williams, his 18th catch of the year coming out of the backfield. Fourth and five, Bethel gonna go for it. Davis to Castronova's left. Two wide receivers at the top of your screen. Sends a man in motion. Big fourth down play. Looking downfield, instantly under pressure. Meeks got Gets him. hit, and that is gonna do it for that series. Bringing in the blitz, and what a play there for the Eagles. Jordan Minkins hits Jordan Castronova, Minkins gets the sack, sack, and that's exactly what you needed. You needed a big play, there's your play. How about Noah Carlson? Forces Castronova up in the pocket, spins around Meekins right there to be able to finish off the play. That's the third time this defense has gotten off the field on fourth down and back-to-back -back drives. They are able Nick to Eilers keep in the, the offense board. starting at the 39-yard line. As you see, a handoff to Garner Harris across the 50 to the 45, inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. She followed up with a big play on Jordan offense. And just like that, you mentioned momentum, Rob. They got some with less than five minutes to go here in the first half. Let's see what they can do, get on the board, as now they are in Wildcats territory. Took the words right out of my mouth. You, you get that big stop on fourth down. You see how excited that bench is. All of a sudden, Garner Harris rips off 20, and you're right in business. Plenty of time to go. Wouldn't be surprised to see them take a shot here. Nick Eilers operating out of the shotgun. Going to hand it off to Garner Harris. Slip. Gets brought down right away after slipping. And that'll bring up second and 11. Another big stop there by Eric Hitz, the 320 pounder. Harris lost his footing and Hicks wasn't gonna let go, dragged him down. But now you're, you're playing behind the chains now, second down, down and 12. Yeah, second down, they gotta get to the 33 yard line for a first down at the 45. Eilers fumbles the ball as he was operating in the pocket. It. it looks like Bethel recovered in a worst case scenario there. Eilers was trying to elude the pressure, got the ball slapped away. And uh, as you see a Bethel player down on the play. That's why you got you talk about ball security. Look, he just leaves the ball hanging out. He got hands everywhere. Hicks and company able to, to, to knock it out, but ball security, you gotta keep that ball close to your body. He's hanging it out there, sort of like a, they talk about a loaf of bread. Hands get in there and knock it away, but that's something the young freshman is going to learn. As you see the training staff taking a look at, uh, <laughs> I believe that's number 42 for Bethel, Chris Beavers on that defensive line. And they're looking at his uh, lower leg and he's not moving, not moving too much, 352 to go. And uh, CCU did have the momentum. They're able to get that big fourth down stop. Garner Harris with the big long run. But once again, first down, you're playing from, from behind the, the chains. Mm -hmm. You're talking about getting that four to six yards. Instead, you lose two at second down, 12 to go. You got to throw the football as uh, able to get up under his own power, which is always good to see. But you're playing behind the, the, the sticks. Defensive end, not respecting the run as much. Able to get pressure up the field and you're able to strip that ball. As you watch Chris Beavers walk off and yeah, it, it just seems like any time it seems like they're about to turn the corner, they have just a little hiccup, and, and that's what uh, that's been the difference today, to be quite honest. They've had some big plays on offense, some big plays on defense, but uh, if you're just tuning in, it, it certainly doesn't look that way, and that's uh, might be unfair, but that's just uh, but you the story of it right now. You've been practicing with Taylor all week. You got him going. You got the offense moving. All of a sudden, you lose him. Quick change now. You got to go to your backup. Eilers played us uh, into some of that as well. Castronova on first down, gonna hand it off up the right side. Bethel gonna advance this. This is gonna go for a first down and more. Down to the 30 yard line. And that's number 24, uh, Deontay Tate, Deontay freshman Tate running back the with, the run, uh, with the run. And you can see him there, get the edge, gets through. And that's a huge gain just for his, Bethel. As now they are in Cincinnati Christian territory. Just again. his third carry of the year. Castronova hands it off again. They're going to call a false start on that one. But now playing behind the stick, this is where you, you got to 
make Castronova and company pay for this. And they've done a, a decent job at that has CCU when they get behind the chains, forcing Castronova to dump the ball short and being able to get off the field at CCU as they've already held three uh, fourth down attempts by this Bethel offense. So first and 15, 3.32 to go. Bethel going to operate under center. Castronova sends his tight end in motion that he's hit for multiple big plays today. It's going to be a pitch up the left side. Some running room there, but good that's tackle. really good tackle. That looks like that was, uh, let's take a look here. That was Alvin Burke, it's the hard, 240 it's hard to see pounder. The premier, Alvin Burke, who we, we called his name a lot last week, and Burke took advantage of his opportunity, and he's out there again today. Well, the one thing that they do have a lot more this week is uh, is depth that they're able to use Meekins out there on the edge and get a little bit more rotation, especially missing uh, Vince Hill Jr. Castronova looking downfield and has the, the, his go-to guy now. That's what Six we're going to call him. Braden Simmons with another reception. It looks like he got right at the first down Braden marker. Braden Simmons on the reception for Bethel. It's been his go-to guy. They're going to have to figure out something at the half, uh, whether it be a rotate a safety over, over on and on, uh, over on the tight end, whatever they need to do. But he's had a big half as Simmons. First and ten on the 19. Clock ticking down to 2:30 to go in the first half. Handoff up the middle. Gets it across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Wheeler again. Does Justin Wheeler? The freshman out of Chattanooga. As we have a CCU player down. Alvin Burke again on, in on that tackle. But for CCU, appears to be Carlos Love, 51, the D lineman, the 5'10", 251 pounder out He's of Louisville. Jogging off okay. Probably get looked at. Looks like he was just a little shaken up. Medical staff not near him, so appears to be okay. Second down, six to go. We got need a stop here. Just two minutes to go before, before the half. You get first ball, second half. Two minutes to go. It's going to be a quick screen, and it was read well. Nice play. And that, who, that was close, and that could have been a huge play, the other way by Quincy Gilbert. He read it the whole time, and uh, I think that might have been why Castronova threw it high. Because if he throws it on target, that's a pick six. And that would have been a huge change in momentum. But another chance, you got third down, most likely four down territories. Bethel's already gone for it for three times on fourth down, so the playbook's open. But another chance for this defense to get off the field. Castronova takes the shotgun snap, looking downfield under some pressure, flips it, oh. batted down, almost intercepted by Danielle Denson. And this defense holds Danielle two Denson pass defenses the past two plays. And Denson would like to have that one back. Jumped the route. That's just perfect. It's perfect tough. defense by the safety, rotating just, over. Yeah, just stretched out just enough to get the, the uh, his hands on the ball there. And that is going to bring on Dalton McCann now. Just Dalton five of six on the year, goal. long of 30. This will be a 31-yarder then. 31-yard field goal, kick up, Block. blocked. And Cincinnati Christian blocks it. They're recovered, and it's they're advancing the ball. Going to advance it to about the 23-yard line. That's the second Defense blocked again. field goal we've had in this game. Eagles return the favor, and with 1.41 to go in this first half, 23-0 Wildcats lead, but CCU with a blocked field goal there. And that is a, a step in the right direction. All right, so first and 10, here we go. It's going to be a pass to Pickett. Pickett grabs it at the 30-yard line. Darian Pryor in Darian Pryor's pass is complete. at quarterback for Cincinnati Christian. 
As you see this replay, they're operating out of the no huddle. Pryor gets back up, looking to pass again. Going deep this time, looking for Jaden Killings. It's going to be out of bounds. Wasn't catchable there. That Ryan will stop the clock, though. 113 to go in this first half. Just a reminder, our very own Rob Roberts will talk to head coach of Cincinnati Christian David Fulcher at halftime to get his thoughts on the first half. All right, so third and three now in the 31. Pryor takes the shotgun snap. It's going to be a handoff. And that's not going to go for much at all. It'll be right at the 30-yard line. It's going to bring up fourth down. Clock stopped. Looks like a timeout Bethel. So Bethel they're going to give their offense out. one more shot. It's 106 here to go in the first half. So it's going to bring on Trey Miles into punt after the timeout. 23 0. Bethel with the lead, and they're going to get one more shot at it here. Miles with his best punt of the day. And good special teams play. That was a critical special teams play by Cincinnati Christian. 56 seconds to go here. Bethel will have to travel 56 yards if they want to score before halftime. I want to put a touchdown on the board at least before halftime. So first and 10 on the 44. So Eagles defense has come up big on multiple back-to-back -back possessions here. Couple pass defense, a blocked field goal attempt on the last drive. They're gonna operate out of the shotgun, looking downfield, throwing it downfield. And he's got his man, and that's the running back. Ty Davis with a huge play. Castronova hit him in stride, and da Davis just used his height, high point of the ball Davis there. On reception for huge Bethel. reception. So not only is he is Davis doing it with his feet, does it with his hands there. And they spike the ball with 30 sec uh, on the 30-yard line with 44 seconds to go in this game or in this uh, second quarter. <laughs> Going to throw it again. Has his man, and he gets out of bounds quickly after a short game. That's Marvin Rudd with the reception. Marvin Rudd on the reception. Castronova can operate out of the shotgun. 38 seconds to go. Third down. And he takes it. It's a quarterback keeper. Takes it up the middle. Makes a man miss, gets close to the first down. I think he got it. Timeout. And Bethel going to take a timeout Bethel here. Calls a timeout. Stops the clock at the thir with 32 half. seconds to go on the 20. They lead 23 nothing here. And you see this run here, Castronova's run, gives them a first down, gives them at least a couple chances at the end zone here. A couple chances to extend their lead before halftime. <laughs> so 
Cincinnati Christian defense has stepped up and played well the past couple possessions especially. Starting quarterback to update you if you're just tuning in. Starting quarterback for Cincinnati Christian Derek Taylor. Out for now. Nick Eilers has been rotating in and out at quarterback along with Darian Pryor. First and 10, 32 seconds to go. Bethel gonna operate out of the shotgun, looking to throw, quick throw up the right side to the receiver, breaks a tackle, he's gonna get all the way into the end zone, fumbled it, and do they rule it? They rule that he fumbled it before the end zone, and that's gonna be Cincinnati Christian ball. What a play. Wow, let's check that replay out, because that's a huge swing. You see the screen pass here. And that's to number 81, Vontae Bates. Bates, Bates makes a few men miss. And miss. And what a play. That's exactly what they needed there. In on that play, number 58, Terrence Shipman, who we've called his name multiple times today, forces a fumble. That saved seven points, saved a touchdown. And that's going to bring Cincinnati Christian's offense back on the field. So three straight possessions where Cincinnati Christian's defense stepping up to close this half. I wouldn't expect anything but a kneel down here to get the halftime, and we're just seconds away from Rob Roberts talking with head coach David Fulcher. And that will do it. He takes a knee. Nick Eilers takes a knee. So at halftime, it is 23-0. Halftime score. Good and bad for the Eagles. CCU's Coming zero. up uh, in just a, a second will be the interview, Rob Roberts with David Folger. So we'll, we'll talk to him, and we will have a, a – let's go down to him now. Rob, you're with head coach David Folger. You get some of that momentum going in the second half. Yeah. Um, defense is tired. Been out there too long and uh, for for a game to, to end up or the way it is this first half when the offense not doing anything, no production, no movement, nothing whatsoever. Well, you did lose your starting quarterback, Derek Taylor, uh, to uh, a c c concussion. Talk about Eilers and Pryor moving forward and what they need to do in the second half. I don't know if, you know, we just got to, you know, control the clock, move the ball down the field, get a first down or two, and make this defense backs up. I mean, they're not backing up right now, so there's no pressure on them at all. All right, good luck in the second half, Coach. All right, all right James, back up to you. That's Eagles head coach David Fulcher, clearly frustrated at this result right now. 23-0, Bethel with the lead. Rob Roberts and myself, James Rapine, will be back with the second half action in about 15 minutes here on Waycross Television and CincinnatiChristianAthletics.com. Right now, the Bethel University Wildcats lead 23 to nothing as we get set for the second half of action. Cincinnati Christian football. I'm James Rapine along with Rob Roberts. Great to have you in on this Saturday afternoon. Let's get to some stats of the first half. And right now, I, Cincinnati Christian, only four first downs in the first half. Rob, you talked to Coach Fulcher. That's where his frustration came from because coming into this, this game, it felt like he felt like the offense would have more success against Bethel's defense that's averaging, giving up over 400 yards per game. And, and they certainly haven't done that. CCU didn't rack up anywhere near that in the first half. Total offense, 32 plays, 98 yards. Well, and the first thing he said, hey, my defense is tired, and that's a direct reflection of that offense. They took the opening drive, and they were able to get it inside the five-yard line, and they came away with nothing. And that was really the turning point since then. Then all of a sudden you lose your starting quarterback. You have to go to the bench, Eilers and Pryor, sort of splitting time almost like every other possession as they were trying to trying to find that spark. But like he said, the very first thing he said before I could even get a question, hey, my defense is tired. And the very fortunate they got that turnover. The defense came up big at a couple spots there, that fourth down stop at the five-yard line, and then that turnover right before the half. Otherwise, you're looking at about a 37 and nothing game. So we're getting ready for the second half kickoff from Trey Miles. And, and can we talk about what just happened? We're going to talk about it on air. I don't care, Rob. So a <laughs> B comes into our booth as we, we watch the second half kickoff. And it's a return to, to the 30. Bethel has some room. 
make that the 40 into Cincinnati Gilbert. Christian territory. And Gilbert's going to take it all the way back for a touchdown. So Gilbert didn't even give us any time to talk about what just happened. <laughs> touchdown, Bethel. And Gilbert showing he's more, more than How just a uh, – Gilbert's a stud, man. His he has an interception today. He's been he, that kick return there. He, that was his fourth kick return. His first three went for 72, and he took that one more than 72. Just a, it's hard to believe he's just a freshman. He's got the five picks. Now he's got a, a touchdown return. He's almost a guy you have to think moving down the road for Bethel as he moves into a sophomore, junior, senior year. That's a guy that you could see play some wide receiver as well. Use him as an athlete on the edge. He. I mean, for a freshman, he's a stud. Extra point up and good. Bethel now has a 30 to nothing lead. But I thought it was 14 pretty, 45 to go in the I third. I thought it was pretty good. I'm talking. I got to be up on the wall. Yeah, so so crush it, crush it with the container. Let, let, let's let's start. So second half about to get underway. B comes in because we have the radio or the window open here in the booth as, as you're watching this return again. And Rob uses his I'm not going to lie, his grape container <laughs> full of his his Halftime snack full of green grapes to kill a bee. Um, it's just I, it's, it's an interesting strategy. You, you were talking, too. It wasn't like it was me talking. You were talking. Hesitated for a second. Multitask. Yeah. How about that? Did you see that? <laughs> it's awesome by him, man. <laughs> man. Yeah. He, <laughs> Rob, Rob, that's why when you, you, you know when penalties happen before they happen. What penalty is going to happen on this play? On this, we're not going to get anything on this one, yeah. but. I'm interested to see who they go with in the second half at quarterback. Do you stick with Eilers, or do you try to give uh, Pryor a little bit more experience? I think that's the, tell, the, the, the tale to look at. But what I want to see, and I think you might see, is whoever they start with in the second half needs to play the entire second half. Let them try to get into a rhythm uh, with the receivers and the line and everybody else as well. Larry Jackson with the return, trying to find room, bouncing it back and forth, not finding anything. Spins through, actually. Wow. And, and, and there's Jackson just kind of showing some of his ability, man, because <laughs> I know he didn't get much there, but he wheels and deals and mo goes through and finds a crease and uh, almost broke it there, at least for a, more of a game than it was, as you get a, a closer look at Jackson and the rest of that Eagles offense. And they're going to go with Pryor to start the second half. And he, Pryor. Had, and he ended the first half as well. 0 for 1. One carry, sorry, negative three yards passing. Four of seven was uh, Derek Taylor Pryor. One for two for seven yards. Now has two completions on the year for, for 12. Pryor sends Jackson in motion on first down, looking to throw. Throws it, and he's got his man, and this is going to go for a while here in into Bethel territory. And, and who else then? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and it's one of those things where, where Killings is a guy you want to get the ball to because he can do something after the catch. He's a kick returner, and you see his ability after the, the catch there. Breaks a tackle, gets it into Wildcats territory, down to the 46-yard line. And the one thing that, that you saw, and hopefully this gets prior in a little bit of rhythm, it was a little late coming out, but as you said, able to make that one-on-one -on -one effort. Hopefully this gets prior going a little bit. First and 10 on the 16, or on the, the 46, rather. I'm getting ahead of myself. Pryor looks downfield, other way, and it was behind Pickett. He had Pickett open. But that's right there, being familiar, having that chemistry with your receivers. Pickett brought it in about three yards too much, but the decision-making, Pryor knew where he was going to go with the football, and that's the one thing that you wanted to see. It's just a few couple yards behind, but that's that miscommunication, not having those game snaps only his second game of the year for prior and the other thing i wonder if we'll see nick eilers again simply because the last time he was in he fumbled and and that, that uh, honestly that could be something where you roll with prior uh for now so we'll see prior operating out of the shotgun nick cox to his left it's going to be handoff to cox up the middle cox gets plenty of yards here gets Go down to nine yards they're going to mark it yeah nine yard gain and that's a good gain on second down. Going to bring up third and short. And so far, so good for Pryor as he opens up the first drive of this third quarter. But how many times in that first half did we see second and 12 and third and 12, third and 13? Now you're at th third and one. It's four down territory. You still keep your run pass option in here on third down. Heck, right now they're like six, six seven yards off some of the receivers. Why not just do a quick hit here? We'll see what they do. It's going to be a handoff to Nick Cox up the middle, and that we should be it. good enough for a first down. 
He's getting stopped at the line. Quick Didn't whistle. even get brought down. Still got the first down. Kind of surprised by, by, by the quick whistle. Nick Cox, the ball carrier. Gain sufficient for a first down. And it will be that pile's still moving. Down. Look at him. His legs are still moving, still moving, still moving. I guess his, his forward progress had, had, been, uh, had been stopped, but a big first down there for CCE, already their second on this drive. They only had four first downs in the first half. Pryor Blitz. takes a shotgun snap, looking, throws the picket, back nice shoulder. Catch. And they say he did not Ooh. catch it. Let's see if we, we got a good shot of, of that one, see if Tony can cue us up one. Of course he can. Here's another look. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that was close. But the one thing the official did have a good view yeah. on it, about three to five yards away, looking right down at Pickett. It From here, it looked like a catch, but refs say no. So second down. So the officials say no on that attempt to pick it. Going downfield again prior. This one to Wommeldorf in double coverage, going to be intercepted. And Wommeldorf in there is going to be returned. And Pryor got in on the hit. Kind of throw, floated that one up. But the decision he made to Wommeldorf down the seam, that's where the, the, the safeties were at. So they got triple coverage over there. If he goes up top to Killings on the far side, he's got one-on-one. -on -one. You see Killings running free as the corner came off. Instead, he throws it into triple coverage with the linebacker and the safety dropping back into coverage. You know what that was? It was the quarterback love. <laughs> Pryor was like, oh, I, Wommeldorf, you're in a receiver, man. I'm going to give you a little bit of love here. No, I mean, it, it's we've seen it multiple times today, Rob. They, they they drive the ball. They look really good. They've been inside the five-yard line, and then they just can't cash it in. And that's just one of, one of those examples. They, they have some big plays, and then they, they hurt themselves with, with different errors and issues. It's also part of the, the process learning how to finish and, and learning how to win. And Coach Fulcher has talked about that process as uh, Alekna and company able to get, uh, wrap them up there, but and Alvin Burke, but it, the process, you gotta learn how to win. You're looking at freshmen and sophomores up and down the roster, mm -hmm. only one really off season of winning yep. conditioning. When you, as you see this team grow and, and evolve, and if you look from last year to, the, to this year, you see a lot of improvements on both sides of the football. As we see a sweep there. Davis, who's huge for Bethel in the first half, averaged 6.7 six yards a carry, also had a reception, touchdown as well, able to stifle him on second down. So this will bring up third and long now. Sam Castronova was 14 of 24 in the first half with 212 yards and a touchdown. Castronova looking to throw, throws it he up to his tight end. He pushed off. That should have been an offensive pass interference. McNeil Jr. pushes him out, but when you see that one queued up, the two hands to the back of McNeil Jr. that got the separation he needed for that catch. Right here at the bottom. And this is to Alex right Allen. Right there. There you see the two-hand push. Able to get that separation that he needed. And here comes Davis on first and 10. Makes multiple players Ford's miss. Ford's got to make that tackle. It's tough. I mean, that, that's the thing. You're, you're dealing with a, a guy in Davis, 250 pounds. He's got, if he's one-on-one -on -one with the corner, he's going to win most of those I'm matchups. kind of surprised he's still in the game. We talked about how he's a little banged up in that first half, was kind of limping on the, on the last couple of, of drives. I really thought they'd take the pads off of him and, uh, and save him. But also, when you're a one-and-six football team. Castronova looking downfield. Aim for his running back in the flat, unable to bring it in. And there you go. Josh bring Williams. Up second down. Williams, a guy with 18 catches on the year, over 280 yards, really more of a sure-handed guy. But once again, Castronova, we say he's 50 percent, but that's about the fifth drop that this receiving core has had for, had for uh, for Castronova. Otherwise, mm -hmm. set of 14 of 24 in that opening half, he'd be a, he'd be a lot more. I mean, you're looking at 14 of 24. Really, he'd be about 18 18 of 24. There was a handoff up the left side. It's number 11, Breland McKinney. McKinney unable to find much room there. As you see, McKinney tried to cut it back. Good defense there by multiple CCU defenders. But you got third down 11. You got a chance to get off the field for the defense. That was Alvin Birkin on that along with others. 
And you're right, third and long here, third and 11. They're going to operate out of the shotgun. Casanova sending his man, positioning his man in the right spot. Takes the shotgun snap, looking downfield. Looking, might run it, going to run it. Trying to make a man miss. Will, but it won't be Bert. enough for a first down. Actually, Noah Carlson, 20 there. And it's going to be fourth down, short five, long four. They wanted to go to the near side, but McNeil Jr. wasn't having any of that. And that's what led Casanova on the scramble as we're going to see the punt unit for the first time on for uh, for Bethel. You see Carlson there gets a hand on him. Second Sh time. Shipman with the, the finishes him on fourth down. So now the offense will get it back. We'll see if Pryor comes out again at quarterback. I wouldn't say Pryor didn't. Pryor actually didn't look that bad. I mean, he threw, the, he threw the interception and triple coverage, just read the wrong one. But that's going to come with reps uh, for the young freshman. Punt off. Killings back for the return. Going to let it bounce into the end zone. That'll be a touchback with 9.26 to go here in the third quarter. Cincinnati Christian going to get the ball with the chance to uh, put some points on the board. It's just waiting to see which quarterback is, is if you go to prior and, you know, quarterback position is all about that rhythm. And when you keep switching back and forth, you know, you really lose that. Um, well, as guess what Eilers, they're doing. It, and Eilers, Eilers is back will be out there. Yeah, Pryor with his helmet off on the sideline, and Nick Eilers walks out there. Or jogs out there, rather. That's tough. That's tough to alternate back and forth. Especially it, the mental part of it if you're a quarterback feeling like if you make a mistake that you're not going to come back in on the very next play. First down handoff to Garner Harris up the middle. Takes it up the right side for a gain of about four Garner yards. With the four yard gain. And Harris is coming out, limping a little bit. And now you have a fullback, and Noah is now in your, in your uh, running back with the loss of uh, Chris Young to concussion. Eilers takes the, the snap. Quick flip to Larry Jackson, Lose and that was snuffed out right away. Was smart by Jackson to get the, secure the ball, knowing that he was going to get hit right away. So now Eilers, one of three for a negative one, his first completion of the day. Eilers on the season. Just two of six for 45 with that touchdown pass. Third and seven here. I'm no, I'm no offensive whiz here, but something tells me Zach Pickett will be uh, option one. You see him at the top of your screen. <laughs> Sends Larry Jackson in motion, looking. Going to go the other way to Jaden Killing's side. And that's intercepted, and that's going to go to the house. And who else? Who Who else? Demetrius Gilbert with the pick six. Number 21, his second interception of the day. Had a touchdown Demetrius return, Gilbert kickoff touchdown. Score. He's got six uh, on the season. Kickoff return for a touchdown earlier this quarter. And that kid as a freshman is just uh, – loading up the stat sheet at the cornerback position. The kickoff return, two interceptions, a pick six. He's going to be looking at uh, not only Mid-South Conference Player of the Week, but he might get some uh, national recognition and, and some votes for National Player of, of the Week as well for that defensive guy. I mean, you look at a true freshman, already six interceptions on the season, leads the country. Now he gets his uh, first pick six, gets his first two touchdowns of his college career, and he doesn't look like a freshman, I'll say that. That's the voice of Rob Roberts along with uh, James Erpine with you on this Saturday afternoon with Waycross Television for us, for everyone uh, working their tail off at the truck. It's great to be with you on this Saturday afternoon. Also, ccuathletics.com. Certainly not the day so far that, that David Fulcher and, and company expected it to be uh, just a few short hours ago, but... Uh, Here's the thing, Rob. You've got to try to get something going on offense. And, and the, the first thing, I think, is figuring out the quarterback position, which is much easier said than done. But th that's exactly what they've got to try to do here well, in the second half. You're going to have growing pains either way. Eilers and Pryor, uh, both limited game action, uh, both freshmen. You just have to – you're going to go with the highs and the lows of, of whoever you stick with. But you know, right now I think you almost have to look at, at Pryor Nick Cox on as the your return. best option. Nick Cox on the return here gets hit really hard. 
gets it across the 35 to the 36 yard line. And then you have to look at Garner Harris who came a little banged up coming off the field the last time. And he's still uh, First down for the Eagles at their 36 walking it off line. along the near side. And now we're gonna see Pryor again. So the quarterback rotation continues. Darian Pryor back in at quarterback for this drive. And we're also going to get a fresh look at uh, Brandon Haley, the freshman running back out of Holmes Community College, Memphis, Tennessee. As it looked like he was getting ready to check in instead. Yep, there he is. He's uh, lining up in the fullback. And this is going to be a sweep to Nick Cox, who finds a little bit of running room, gets it to the 49, make it uh, or 39, 40 yard line. And Nick Cox, so far today, we saw it some last week as well. He runs hard, runs right. hard. It's certainly, you say fullback, uh, you, you don't think of a guy who can give you much in the, the rushing attack as far as with the ball in his hands, but he has so far. He has, and you got to look at, at the loss of, of Austin Bowling, who who got the start at the beginning of the year. They lose him to injury, you lose Young to injury. Garner Harris is now. A little back up, back uh, a little bit uh, banged up. So now you're you're almost a running back by necessity, as you use Nick Cox. Pryor gonna hand it off to Cox again up the left side. He's gonna get another four yards. But you're that third and three, keeping that playbook open and you're keeping that pressure off your young quarterback. And this is exact. This is what they wanted early on. This game they weren't able to get Gardner Harris scoring like they wanted to early, and they had to pass it. You know, we mentioned the second and longs, third and longs. The obvious they, passing they, downs. They, were, they had to throw it on those downs. And coming in, I think they thought that they were going to be able to run the ball for three, four, five yards early on, um, like they have so far on this this possession. But that's the and loss that changes of, everything. And the loss of Young goes a long way into that as no well. Doubt. No doubt about it. So we got third and two here as we approach six and a half minutes to go in this third quarter. Pryor going to pitch it to Cox. Cox being patient behind the line gets about a yard. But that's going to bring up fourth and two. And that was um, that was that same pitch play they ran with Young last week, where they hurry up and give him that quick pitch so he can see uh, see the holes opening up, and he just didn't have one. Good pursuit there by the uh, center of that defense. Punt team on now. J.J. Walker, the freshman, for 53. Cincinnati Christian. Play clock at eight. Punt away, punt up. Punt gonna bounce. It's gonna, take, it's gonna a take a CC. Cincinnati Christian bounce and let that bounce. It's gonna be inside the 25 at the 24 yard line. So Trey Miles might not have gotten the, the best leg on that one because it went up in the air a bit, but it does take a bounce. It's a net punt of about 30 yards. Still helps that, gonna, still helps that net. Absolutely. You gave your defense a, a small break, but this time, you know, making uh, Bethel go the distance of the field, not having to work with the short field, that defense. All right, so first and 10. Davis back in at running back. Going to be a play action pass to him. Rifles it downfield, does Castronova to no avail. That's probably the worst throw that he's had all night. Really yeah. short arm that one, mm -hmm. about three yards short. But given scoring situation, and I know they're a one and six football team, and you want to get Castronova some reps, but I kind of surprised it at Davis and company that's still in the it's still in this game. Bethel certainly didn't expect to be in this position at this point in the year at one and six, but they are. Probably uh, Castronova, first-year starter, want to get him as many reps as possible. And uh, this will be a handoff up the middle. Going to go for about, make that three yards, so to bring up set, uh, third down and seven on the 27-yard line. Once again, a chance for that defense to get off the field because if you look at the second half, the defense has not, has, hasn't yielded up any points, and, and overall they haven't given up 16 of these points. Mm -hmm. If you look at the safety, uh, the kickoff return, and the pick six as well. Third and seven, Castronova operating out of the shotgun, looking downfield, gets pressured, breaks the pressure, going to run for the first down, and we've seen this multiple times today. He eludes the pass rush. He did it on the first touchdown of the game, 
He ran on third and 19 and picked up the first down. And that led to the, the first touchdown of the game later on that drive. And you see Castronova's ability, even with that big brace on his knee, <laughs> able to run and uh, get a first down there. Well, that was a smart play as well. He looked down the field, his receiver primary wasn't open, and all he saw was a bunch of green uh, green grass, green turf, and this took advantage. Pitch up the right side. This is going to be a pickup of about six yards. And that's Justin Wheeler. Wheeler in the first half got a, a few carries but wasn't a big part of what Bethel did on the ground. Wheeler staying in to the right of Castronova. Three receivers to the bottom. It looks like that might have been offsides, but they, they haven't. They, I don't see any flag down, though. He's out of bounds. They're going to say he got it. It was close. Uh -oh, Let's see if we can get the view that. on that What one. a catch if he did. I didn't think there was a chance that he caught that. You're going to get a good end zone shot of it here. Yep. Oh. No. I think his foot came up before he got. Vontae Bates there. His foot was in the air when he yeah, caught the pass. Not a catch. It was close. But it'll count. So now first and 10 on the 39. Handoff up the middle. This is going to go for a first down and more huge running room. Horton. Inside the 15-yard line now. But when you talk about your defense getting tired, that's when you see those little cracks and they start to turn into bigger holes, and that's what you're going to see right there. Justin Wheeler. Yeah, it goes untouched until there. And we got a CCU player down back at the 36. Almost looks like it could be Noah Carlson. And I think it is number 20. That'd be another big loss. Yeah, they, they've already is, lost Shoby it is, it uh, is for the year. And uh, already out with Ben Hill uh, Jr. on the defensive line as well. He's, he's, uh, he's out for the next few months still after uh, as he's getting ready for, uh, for some surgery as well. And we talked about with Coach Fulcher last week, so almost like a mash unit in regards to the injuries, especially on that defensive side of the football. So it's good to see Carlson uh, get back up. You see he's able to walk off, probably just shaking up. Looks like he's good to go. <clears throat> so it'll be first and 10 on the 12-yard line following a big run by Justin Wheeler for the Wildcats. They could still get a first down at the two. Castronova can operate out of the shotgun on first down. They jumped. That's going to be a free play. Definitely an offsides there. That time they weren't able to get back, and I think this might be the final drive that we do. Uh, that we do see uh, Casanova. I think we're going to look at seeing uh, Braxton Bogus come in on the next drive. Is that was fast snap, but that was all by the offsides. Offsides on CCU. Five-yard penalty. So now the ball going to be spotted at the seven. First down. And that's a screen pass that might get a flag. No flag there. Williamson out in coverage. They were trying that little wheel route. To Wheeler. But he's wheel, also behind the wheel line route of scrimmage. To Wheeler. Yeah. So good job there by. It's uh, a specialty. <laughs> tried. Good job there by, <laughs> by, there by Trevor to uh, pick that up out on the edge. Going to bring up second down. <laughs> on the six yard line. Going to throw it looking left side. No one he's might run, run it here. It. And he's, he's going to run for it, and he's going to get in. Touchdown, Wildcats. Sam Castronova, this first rushing touchdown of the day. And we've seen him now run for multiple big gains in this one. Ran for uh, on a big third down earlier in the drive. That one goes for six. And the Wildcats are now up 43 to nothing right now. 
Willard Sargent Stadium with 2.49 to go in the third quarter. And that's also his first uh, rushing touchdown of the season as well for the junior. Extra point up and good. So now it is 44-0 Wildcats lead. So now what do you do at quarterback, Rob? If you're, if you're Coach Rob, what, where, who's going in? I'd stick with Pryor. And it looks he, like that's what they're going to do. He's got his helmet in his hand. And he's giving you the best on. option, but right now it's just about getting reps. Yep. Let that kid get into the rhythm and see what he can do. And at this point, obviously, with the score being what it is, you just want to get some kind of points on the board. You need something to build on. Well, they've had some chances. Plenty. To do plenty, that. Plenty they just haven't been able to, to, to finish some of those drives. As you take a look at downtown Cincinnati. Beautiful backdrop from uh, Willow Stargell Stadium. No doubt about that as we have the kickoff here. That's going to bounce. It's Ball's a live loose. ball. Good uh, play there by Jackson to hop <laughs> on the football. Oh, my goodness. That ball just died. Yeah, it did. They were expecting it to bounce up. I think it did not. And Jackson, I like Jackson's game, man. I think Larry Jackson um, – and I know with the offense and the quarterback situation being the way it is, but I think he's slippery. I think if you can get him the ball a few times, uh, he might be able to make a couple plays for you. Well, he gives you that, that, that little burst ability with that quick acceleration if you're able to get him on the edge. But Eiler's back at quarterback, but you got, you need to get him that ball in space. That's interesting. So, so Pryor he's had a, his helmet on, too. Like, he put his helmet on actively, getting ready to go out there. But, yeah, Eiler's in at quarterback now, first and ten. Going to hand it off to Garner Harris. Harris trying to find some room, gets across the 30. Going to be marked at the 31-yard line. But it's you're going to need to get some first downs. This defense, is just getting, they've been on the field just getting tired as Wallendorf is going to check in at, at the slot. And I was almost thought that you might see him at quarterback at one point in the second half. He has yet to have a reception today has Braden Wommeldorf. He has been targeted a few times. And this time, in t pass intended for Jaden Killings, another speedster, handles the kick returns for the Eagles. Nice. Batted down, and that was a dangerous play. That could have went That could have went for six if Malik Wildcat, Coleman. Yeah, if he was able to hold on. Nice play there, there on the edge by the junior linebacker out of Murfreesboro. Third and eight, 2.12 to go in the third quarter. Nick Eilers operating out of the shotgun. He will look to pass. Looking, 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 nothing. Going to run out of bounds. Gets hit afterwards. I no, think he just got tangled up with the chains. No, no flag. But now you're let's, that third let, down and long, or you're getting that third and long let's again. Let's take a look. At, yeah, I don't know if I would have given a penalty on that. Looked like he was trying to hold him up at but first. But if you're an Eagles fan, heck yes, you <laughs> complain about that. Want every penalty. Come on, official. Yeah. <laughs> That's Trey Miles on for the, the punt. And this one was nearly blocked. And Miles got rid of it. He must have because he just got hit. That ball's loose. That ball touched, and that's going to be Eagle football. That ball hit number seven, and that's a loose football. Yeah, let's, take the, let's look at this replay, Rob, because that was – there were so many things that happened on that play. Let's start with the punt. The punt. So Trey Miles barely gets rid of it, gets hit, falls down, no penalty. It drops. Hits the returner in the hand. Why? I have no idea why. He was even near the football. Yeah, so that, there we go. And this looks like it's going to be Pryor coming in now at quarterback for the Eagles. The 36-yard line, first and 10, so the quarterback shuffle continues. Prior. Jaden Killings will be at the top of your screen. Braden Wommeldorf in the slot. The bottom, Zach Pickett. 
Nick Cox in the backfield, along with Pryor. Pryor with the read option, going to keep it. Picks up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. They're going to give him two yards up to the 38-yard line. So they'll bring up sec second down and eight to go. Of course, next week, uh, CCU travels uh, down to Kentucky Christian for a 1.30 kick before uh, returning home for, uh, for uh, Faulkner to end the home slate while uh, Bethel, they're going to have a tough time next week as they get all of Lindsey Wilson, a team we saw that has a lot of firepower yep. on that offense. Lindsey Wilson, one of the top teams in the country. Before they finish off with Kentucky Christian. Pryor operating out of the shotgun. Looking to throw. There's Brayden Wombledorf's first reception of the day. And that's going to be up to the 44-yard line. So that'll bring up third and two. But for Wombledorf, his second catch of the year. First reception of the day. And so now third and two after the special teams error by the Wildcats. Pryor operating out of the shotgun. Nick Cox to his right. Two wide receivers to the, to the bottom of your screen. Four wide receivers total. Wommeldorf nice fell. Nice catch. Recovered. Now they're going to say he dropped oh. it. It's going to be fourth down, and, and he you fell. got to go for it here. I was kind of surprised they were going to throw the football. And they are going to punt it. Let's take a look at this here. Oh, no, it's okay. No, no worries. So, looks like Wommeldorf drops it there, and I was like, oh, man, secret weapon, <laughs> you know, in the slot. He just slipped coming out of his route. Yeah. Pryor had the, right, open, yeah. he had the right read. He was open. He just slipped a little bit coming out of it. I, I think I think you'd, based on Eilers, and I know what That's I – And this is blocked. And he's just going to be and, a scoop and score. And, and it might so. be, but they can't scoop it. Now they scoop it. And they score it. Touchdown, Wildcats. In the block that almost happened last time, that's Christopher Burney, the sophomore defensive back, scores the touchdown on the punt block. And that's going to make it 49 to nothing, Bethel. And there's the block, and there was no doubt about it. I thought they and were going to go for it there, then, fourth down and two around midfield. Yeah, you'd think with their, their punt issues that they might have. And here's Burney with... Way to keep his feet there, and then he cuts back. And, man, it's extra point up, extra point good, 50 to nothing with 18 seconds to go. 51 nothing, rather. That with was a big. 18 seconds to go in this one. Just given the uh, the score, the down the distance, and when they were out on that, on that fourth down and, and two, that's why uh, when they threw it on that third down, I thought they might go for it on fourth down and, and, and two, the way uh, Nick Cox has been able to pick up two yards yeah. on every carry. It was kind of a, that's why I thought they were in that situation. That's why they threw for it on third down. And. One thing I think you got to think about with the, the whole going for it thing, like if you're David Fulcher, one, Trey Miles isn't getting a, a lot of time. Two, he's, he's struggling some. Putting him back there on a, a third, fourth, and two, or fourth and two, why not go for it? Like what, what is the harm? Well, you're, you know? you're kind of looking at it as, as a mentality thing that, you know, that we're still, we're still fighting. We're, we're around midfield. We're going to take a chance here. And uh, that's why I thought that was one of those calculated risks, maybe going for it on fourth down, give just the, the down the distance and the situation in the game. We have the kickoff here. This will be returned by Jaden Killings at the 20. Tries to cut it back up to the 25. Eludes a, a defender, tries to, doesn't. It'll be spotted forward progress, 28-yard line. And there's 12 seconds to go in this first half, or first half, whoa, in the third quarter. Who, Rob. I don't know what you had I, at halftime, but. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> Rob's like, what? We're at halftime? Uh, 12 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Nick Eilers will be the quarterback for this drive as he jogs out there. Nick Cox will be in the backfield next to Eilers. Two wide receivers at the top of your screen. Jordan Killings, or Jaden Killings at the bottom of your screen. Eilers doesn't see much, gets sacked. 
And, and I know Eilers had the Cody the Clark again. The touchdown. Eilers had the touchdown pass last week, but so far this week, there's there's no doubt in my mind. Darian Pryor's looked better than Eilers. Well, Pryor, you know, you talk about the Walmdor slipped out, on, and that is the final play of the third quarter after the eight-yard loss on the second down and 18 when, when we get started in quarter you number see four. Eilers, but Eilers, you see Eilers limping a little. But Pryor's made some good decisions, uh, taking away the interception when he threw that ball up in, in triple coverage. But that's sometimes when you have to kind of live with that when you're breaking in a freshman quarterback, getting those reps. But he's made some good quick decisions. Um, he likes to throw the ball down the field and push the ball down the field, and that's going to help your run game. But when you keep flip-flopping back and forth, you know, you look at it from a mental aspect and, and – you know, from a confidence point of view about, hey, I made a mistake. Am I going to see the field again? Yeah, and right now Nick Eilers talking to head coach David Fulcher on the sidelines, as you see here. And it looks like Pryor's in the huddle with the offense. Looks like he might get the, the play here. And, and, and you see Fulcher just coaching him up some. And a lot of that is, you know, This is what you need to do. This is why we're doing what, what we're doing. This is what you need to be. And that's that growth and maturity and, and the mentoring that uh, that Coach Fulcher brings, especially given his, his background and pedigree as well. <laughs> He's got a long resume as far as football knowledge goes. Second and 15 on the 24-yard line to open this fourth quarter. Pryor with a quick flip to Larry Jackson. Jackson looking for room, shifty, shifty. Gets a couple yards, even though there wasn't much there. Well, we talked about and get, I, see, I like a play like that. Well, get, get the, the ball in your playmaker. Get him in space. Hands. And we had just uh, talked about that on the, on the previous drive. How do you can you get how can you get your playmakers the ball out in space? And that time they were able to only picked up a couple yards, but now you give the defense one more thing to uh, to worry about is you're in a third and long situation as uh, Chapman checks out. So really surprised that he hasn't been targeted. Uh, yet to get yet today uh, the previous home game before the last one 10 catches had that touchdown grab uh, mm -hmm. from shimmy had really like a coming out party and that tight end can be such a crucial weapon especially with a young freshman quarterback well we're seeing it on the other side <laughs> at tight end with uh, with how they've used their tight ends today got to catch that I think is, he, I think he had footsteps that one to pick it wouldn't have been good enough for a first down but dropped and that's second ball that hit picket in the hands today that he dropped. Let's take a look at that, that replay again. It's not that he wouldn't have had the first down, but you would have gave your punter a little bit more room and a little bit more room for your defense when they come back on the field. But I think he just saw that safety coming over. He took his eyes off the ball. That was not a badly thrown ball by Pryor. Pryor has a little zip on that for does the lefty. And Braden Simmons was the, the player I was talking about. He had five receptions for 97 yards and a touchdown, the tight end for Bethel today. He only had six catches coming into the season. Career game for him. And that, nice. what a play. Boom. Cincinnati Christian special teams. Let's take a look at that one again. And that's number 56 on that one. And just a just huge, terrain. huge hit from Terrain. Boom. Freshman linebacker. Out of Irvington High School, out of Jersey. It's a big hit. It's what they needed. And plays like that are going to be – because this, this film is going to be hard to watch for this team, you know, but plays like that are going to make it worth it. And we it got a new watch. quarterback in. Yep, new quarterback. Braxton Boggess. Braxton Boggess is a junior, and he's going to flip it out to the left side on the sweep, looking for running room. It's number 24, Deontay Tate. We Tate talked about Braxton, yard line. just his fourth game of action, 8 of 13 on the season, 61%, 64 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Quarterback rating 153.7 for the junior. Out of Trenton, Bogus, Tennessee. Same play, same exact play almost. CCU sniffs it out. It gets to midfield. Well, it you, stops there. You're at the point where you should just see Bethel really just work on that run game, just work that clock down and, and, and get out of here. You might see Bogus throw a couple balls just so you can see what you got in case you know uh, Casanova does get hurt. But I think here they're just trying to shorten the game, avoid any more injuries, and just, just get out of here. They did what, what they wanted to do when they came in here and, and got a W. Bogus can operate out of the shotgun on third and two. 
And he's going to keep it here. And nice. I don't think he got the first, and he didn't. What a hit there. And guess who? Florence <laughs> Lamar Florence again. with another big hit. I love the way that kid hits. And watch this right here. Just boom. Just his fourth carry of the year for Bogus. And that was a big hit by Florence. He's had a good game along that defense. The defense really has not played played that bad if you look at the special team score with the pick six and the safety. I mean, in some of the situations they're put in, the defense has done their job. They'd be able to cause a couple turnovers and held uh, a turnover on downs inside the five-yard line as well. Jaden Killings back to return this punt. It's going to bounce short. Killings That's a dangerous. dangerously returns it, grabs it. That's something at the you, see on, yard line. you see that on film. That's something they're going to address. You got three defenders around a big hop like that. You can't can't take a chance like that, especially with no blockers around. Even if even given the scoring situation. Yeah, you know what it is. I bet he's so just frustrated, wants to make a Correct. play that he's. It, Gets his, gets his hands on it and see if he can do something with it. And his kind of speed, we saw in a kickoff earlier where he was a, a leg tackle away from taking one to the house. Yeah, we did. We did on a return. So here we go. Pryor will be out there, be in at quarterback again. It's going to be a handoff. Bouncing it outside. It's going to be a pickup of about four yards. It's Bryce Kelly. And with Pryor back in there, I think we see him uh, the rest of the way for the final 1140 of this football game. And depending on what happens with, uh, with Derek Taylor, you might see Pryor get to start next week down at, down at Kentucky Christian. Yeah, it's an interesting Or game. do you make that switch back to Walmdorf, who you've already switched out to a wide receiver? I don't think so. Or do you split I, I, split, I, I, split reps between Walmdorf and Taylor? But a lot of that depends if he passes concussion protocol. Pryor going to roll out. Second down, looking downfield. Ball got tipped, it looked like, but he hits Larry Jackson. That's going to be nice a catch. first down. Had to go down and get it, but he got it. Yep. He needed that. That defense needs a break, and that's going to buy him a few extra minutes. And you watch Pryor here. Hard to do this. Roll to your left, roll to your right. Throw back left. It gets tipped. Ball still gets there. Jackson, with good concentration, gets the reception. I like Jack. I'm a little part. I, I don't know. Shifty, quick. Try to get him the ball some. As as Just you see, three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Kentucky State transfer. Pryor, going to keep it on the, the read option. Nice run. That's exactly on what he the, did. He the read the quarterback keeper. He read to the 41. He read that defensive end perfect. He pinched down, took it out of his belly, and kept it himself. And for Larry Jackson, that's his ninth carry of the year for 31 yards. Pryor going to operate out of the shotgun again. Zach Pickett at the top of the screen. Three receivers to the bottom of your screen, including Larry Jackson in the slot. It's going to be handoff up the middle. He's going to be about a half a yard short. And that falls Ball's out. And wow. And that was a handoff. Ball to number 30. And that's going to be Brandon Haley, the freshman running back. He came from Holmes Community College, and he fumbles there. He was getting an opportunity, fumbles, and that uh, that does not bode well for him as now Bethel will take over at the 40-yard line. Well, they were starting to get some stuff going. They got the first down, starting to get in that midfield range, and just unfortunate, you know, that's like the second time we, we've seen a running back get stripped at the end of a play as well. Bethel on first and 10. It's going to be a rollout. Trying to get the edge. Meeks. Not going to get it, but he flips it. And, and guess who? Oh, my. God. Surprise, he's still in the, in, in the game. Uh, freshman tight end, Braden Simmons, who leads this team in receiving with another reception today. Had a huge first half with five receptions for 97 yards. And this is just a really good play by Braxton Bogus, just to flip it up there. And he's hurt. He's sitting down the far side, sitting up. And besides Casanova, they have no other quarterbacks with reps. 
the season. So this would be an interesting call if you if you want to risk putting Casanova back out there, even if it's just to hand the ball off. And that's who they have standing up over next to him. But the way he had to turn his body to flip it, and Meeks was right there to hop on him. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to go right back to Castronova. And you have to believe they're going to keep him out of harm's way. There's not going to be that quarterback rollout. This is going to be just straight up dives and pitches. You would assume so with 9.49 to go in this game. The score being as it is, 51-0 Bethel. Why take a risk with your starting quarterback as Castronova jogs out onto the field? Going to operate under center here. First and 10 on the 28. Clock starts to roll following the injury. It's going to be a pitch to the right side. And he's going to take it back left side. Great blocking, great acceleration. That's number 11, Breland McKinney. And we've seen him a, a couple times today. I don't know how that guy doesn't hasn't had more carries. He's third, only, third carry of today. Third today. He's got a touchdown. Almost was two for two in touchdowns. Hadn't had a carry coming into this game. And that kind of speed through the hole and hopping into the outside, you have to believe moving forward that they're going to get try to get this kid the ball in space as well. You wonder if he was banged up or injured or something. Something. And, and, he had to be in a doghouse or something. Yeah, because <laughs> a, a mixture of him and Davis is, is a scary Scary one-two punch at running back as McKinney gets the pitch on the right side. Looking for a hole. Patient cuts it back. Gets it to the five-yard line. Patience was the perfect word right there. How he stopped, waited for that hole to develop, cut it back inside, and took a no gain into a five-yard gain. And you see it right here. McKinney stops, changes di direction, gets his momentum going forward, picks up about five yards. Second and goal on the five. McKinney remains in the backfield. It's going to be a pitch to him on the right side, looking for a hole. Gets hit right at the line of scrimmage. Going to be stopped at the three. Chance for that defense, so get another stop here. Third down, goal to go. Third down and four. He's going to throw it, and that's off target. And that's going to bring up fourth down, and it's going to stop the clock. And they're going to run the field goal unit back out there, but I'm surprised they even had him throwing the football in that situation. Yeah. I mean, you got to look Especially at he was cold, too. It's not like he was warming up on the sideline. And line. you got you got to look at scoring situation a, a, as well as they bring on the f field goal unit. They had the first one blocked, now five of seven on the year, still long of 30. This one about 21 yards. Field goal up. And they almost got to that one. Field goal good. So with 7.55 to go in this game, it is Bethel 54, Cincinnati Christian 0 in this NAIA division matchup in uh, NAIA football. You, you mentioned next week what Bethel's got. They, they got a tough task, but you look at this Cincinnati Christian team, you're going up against Kentucky Christian next week. Good matchup for, for CCU. CCU has a chance. You, you got to use the seven and a half, or seven plus minutes left to build on that. Give yourself a little confidence going into that. You, That's your chance at a win. And you got to use it to build up Pryor's confidence a little bit and get him involved in the chemistry and this offense as well. It is This is the time to do it. You got to get Pryor going as we get a shot of the truck. Yeah, did you see of the truck? You're not even going to acknowledge him. Okay. I'm not even sure who it was. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was Tony. What What do you mean? Oh. The man, behind, sure. the man behind the curtain? Yeah, the man who makes us look good. We just sound bad. But he, uh, Of course, he was the guy in the truck earlier. had his leather helmet on from when he played high school football. <laughs> Great uh, squib kick. Cincinnati Christian going to get the ball at the 40. That squib, squib was recovered by Jay Compton out of Lexington. Of course, Tony had the uh, Coleraine Lakota West uh, game last night. Coleraine ran away from that one, 38, 38 to 10. What a shocker. Coleraine is Coleraine. <laughs> All right, so first down, handoff up the middle. Going to go for, heck, a first down. Good 11-yard pick. Uh, That's pick Bryce up. Kelly. Good hard run. 
out of uh, Crestwood, Kentucky, South Holdham High School. And Pryor staying in, Darian Pryor staying in at quarterback. He's been in the quarterback the past couple drives. So I think you're right, Rob. I think they're sticking with him for the rest of this one. And if you're Cincinnati Christian here, what you want, you just get the ball down the field, take your time, try to get six. Just keep running the same offense. You want to get Pryor uh, comfortable in, in the normal sets as Kelly gets another run here. Get him used to calling out the, those same plays that you're going to run. Get him used to those formations. Uh, keep that run game involved. And let him run the normal offense as you get ready for Kentucky Christian next week. That would have been interesting on, on that one if Pryor would have kept it because I think there was more room there. Pryor has a lot more speed than what you think. A kind of a stocky guy. Uh, he wants to throw the ball first, run it second kind of guy. And But as he showed him on the uh, option earlier when he took the ball out of the belly, that uh, he does have that speed on the edge. <clears throat> Pryor moves his running back over in the backfield now. And this is going to be a read option. Pitch to the right. Not Gets going anywhere. Drilled. Cody Clark again. All 245 pounds of beef. Fourth and six, though this is a uh, this is go territory here. And yep, they're they're going to go for it. His prior jogs over, chat with his offensive coordinator. Pryor on this fourth and six. Clock approaching five minutes. Takes a shotgun snap. Looking to throw. Looking downfield. Throws it. And that was to Larry Jackson. Would have been short of the first down anyways. Pass goes incomplete. And that's going to give the ball back to the Bethel Wildcats with 5-12 to go in this one. That was a good little comeback route, but just a little too high on, on the curl. Good throw there by Pryor. Just a tad too high. I, I still think that when he looks at it, Larry might think that's one he should have came down with. But you'd like to see... Uh, Prior get that ball down just a little bit. Yeah, the problem is even if he does, he's short. You he's know? short, but it, I think the plan there was like a catch and run. Still good, good to work on on those on those underneath routes as well. As now we have a our third quarterback in on the night, Eric Knight, listed as a wide receiver, the junior. Flips it outside. On the screen pass, going to be a pickup of about seven on first down. Kind of surprised they're, they're throwing the football here, even even though it is it is the backup. Eric Knight is listed as a wide receiver. Am I wrong about that? Yep. I, I was going to say at least on mine. Out of Nashville. Listed as a wide receiver in now. At quarterback. Takes the shotgun snap, going to hand it off. And that's McKinney. Nice gang tackle there. Out on the edge as well as Jones, the freshman DB, able to get in on the stop. Third and eight on the 50. Clock approaching four minutes to go. Eric Knight operating out of the shotgun. Cincinnati Christian looking to get their ball back to the offense for one more drive. And it's going to be a pass, and that's behind him and dropped. So Bethel going to turn the ball back over, or not turn the ball back over, give the ball back. Christopher Richard on the drop on that one, but ball definitely behind him from Eric Knight. Well, that shows the uh, listing of wide receiver 
yeah. correct there, but <laughs> there you go. it's also better than the alternative of, you know, you got to come up with a contingency plan in case somebody does get hurt, and you don't want to keep Casanova out there. It just takes the wrong person just to, to roll into you. Punt off. Jaden Killings coming up to get it, and that might have hit a Cincinnati Christian player. I don't player. think it did. It now looks they are like they're the baggy. Nope, they're saying it didn't hit. The near side judge is saying that ball did not hit anybody. Can't tell there. It would be if it did it hit 37 or not. The 37 Bill Bear Jones. Looks like it is going to be Cincinnati Christian ball. Haley now at running back, Brayden Haley. Had a fumble earlier. Let's let's take a look at this one more time. It doesn't look like it. I think it was close, but I don't think because that player would have reacted differently. Ball's out. Pryor in Haley. That was a very, with a poor very fortunate bounce. And, and just like that, Haley comes out. Bryce Kelly comes in. But that also always goes back to reps. Second and 12, Pryor can operate out of the shotgun. Play action, a keeper spins backwards, makes a man miss, turns it into a positive play, even though he had someone in the backfield. That'll be a pickup of two yards. Still looking at third and eight after that gain of four. Yeah, gain of four rather, yes. Yeah, so it'll be past the original line of scrimmage. Still third Up down. Up to the 40-yard line. Still playing behind line. the sticks, though, with that third down and eight. And Fulcher talked about the top. That was what he was trying to avoid. Wallendorf in, Chapman out. And Pryor going to hand it off up the middle there on third down. That's going to bring up fourth down. And we'll bring on the punting unit. All right, so here we go. Trey Miles on for the punt. He's got it. Gets the punt off. And that's going to go out of bounds. And Let's he, see where it went. It went he, off the side of his foot. And you got to believe this is going to be uh, three kneels with the 40-second play clock, and it should be enough to, to get on out of here. Nope, instead they're going to throw it. He dropped it, ball hit the ground. And why they're throwing it with 138 to go, well, they just, no need for Clock that. Clock stops. Bethel throws it on first down. At this point, I mean, you look at the game's over. You just need to go to a couple victory formations. The clock would, would have ran out. Now they're going to be looking at having to punt on fourth down. And they're going to operate. They're operating like it's a seven-point game. Out of the shotgun. Eric Knight, maybe they maybe they need to get Eric Knight some reps, Rob. No, they he's can do that take on the, the practice field. Going to take the keeper, and he's going to get a first down, and then some stays in bounds. Okay, now you go to victory formation. Uh oh, hey Rob, there's another B in the booth. <laughs> there's another B in the booth, man. Here you go. Oh yeah. Uh oh. Uh 
All right, so clock approaching one minute now. Yeah, 13 on the gonna play clock, and they're it. snapping the ball. Throw it again. This will be complete. Wow. This will keep the clock ticking. First down and then some. It makes zero sense. Approaching 50 seconds to go in this game. Knight takes the keeper. Going to stay inbounds, make a man miss. Gets down to the 20. That should be the final play. Line. And that'll do it. They don't have to snap the ball again. We're inside 40 seconds. And they shouldn't even, they don't even need to run another play. Why they're even calling one in is... Here's what it is. So, Rob, would you take a shot here? I don't. <laughs> I mean, just my personal belief of 54 to nothing game. It's not NCAA football uh, 14. They're going to run another play. Running one more. Wow. Running a shotgun. Knight going to run it up the right side. And that is going to do it here at Willard Stargell Stadium. As you see both teams running on the field now, Coach David Fulcher. Didn't expect it this uh, didn't expect it to go this way, but for everybody back at the truck, including Tony, for Rob Roberts, for Waycross Television and CCUathletics.com, I'm James Erpine. Final score here, 54 to nothing. Cincinnati Christian falls to 0-8 on the season.